Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Today is Monday, May 28th, and this episode is brought to you by my fantastic sponsor, El Cajon Harley. El Cajon Harley is the finest Harley Davidson dealer in America. Don't go anywhere else to get your two wheel machine. Head to El Cajon Harley in Southern California, down by San Diego. Yeah, maybe you don't live around there. It doesn't matter. Fly into the airport. My boy Greg Riley will pick you up, head over there, and ride your bike home wherever you live. That's what I'm talking about, an adventure. Get on two wheels and ride across America or maybe just ride down the street wherever you live. Do not sleep. Get your motorcycle at El Cajon Harley. All kinds of great things going on there right now. They've got excellent uh, selection of used bikes. They've got an amazing selection of touring with the brand new Milwaukee 8 engine. They can get you financed. Also, maybe you just need your motorcycle service. They got a great service department. They put together my machine, and it is rock solid, man. Go get new tires, brakes, whatever you need. Get ready for Sturgis. That's going to be coming up right around the corner. You want to have your brand new machine to ride across America to show off. You want to be like, look at this fucking badass Screaming Eagle Street Glide, and then just fucking turn up the tunes and be like, yeah! El Cajon Harley. Follow them on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Tell them I sent you. Make sure you get your motorcycle at El Cajon Harley. I love these guys. They are my official sponsor of Let There Be Talk, and they uh, have been sponsoring the podcast for a year now. So how great is that? El Cajon Harley. Here we are. It is a three-day weekend, and uh, nothing more three-day weekend to me than um, rock and roll. That's the bottom line. Whenever I think of the Memorial Day weekend, I think of 1983, May 28th, May 29th, May 30th, the US Festival. I talk about it every year, and uh, I just recently talked to Nikki Six about it. And I just can't stop talking about it because it was so epic. And I feel like it just does not get enough glory. You know, all you hear about is Woodstock, Coachella, and, uh, you know, that's about it. You never hear about the Us Festival. And uh, there was two of them. There was one in, uh, what was it, 81 or 82? And then there was the 83. But the 83 was the big one. And it was, uh, doesn't get any more massive than what was going on out there. And I hope one day they have a full-blown documentary on it because it was epic. Of course, a lot of people just talk about the metal day, which was Van Halen, um, Scorpions, Judas Priest, Triumph, Motley Crue, Ozzy with Jakey e. Lee, Quiet Riot. But the other days were just as fucking epic Uh, You know, The Clash, day one, headline. It was the last show ever with the four original guys. Uh, I was there. And uh, day three, David Bowie headline. You know how huge that is? That's during the return of the Thin White Duke era. Let's Dance is massive. Also on that day was Missing Persons and uh, a little band called U2. You know, so uh, if you look at those bills... They were incredible. And there'll probably never be anything like that again. Uh, Or maybe. I mean, you know, Coachella's pretty close, but I'm talking about just for uh, the insanity, you know? Back then, just throw up something in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, I mean, can you imagine you're like, uh, here's, 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 let me give you the rundown real quick. Saturday, The Clash, Minute Work, Stray Cats. English Beat, Flock of Seagulls, Oingo Boingo, Wall of Voodoo, In Excess, Divinals. Uh, next day, which would be uh, Sunday, Van Halen, Scorpions, Triumph, Priest, Ozzy, uh, Motley Crue, Quiet Riot. A third day, Bowie, Stevie Nicks, John Cougar, Pretenders, Missing Persons, U2, Court of Flash, Berlin, Little Steven, uh, Joe Walsh. The insanity of this, this weekend is not, uh, you know, it, it, like, like people say, oh, we got festivals now and stuff, but look at the caliber of those bands. 
The Clash, David Bowie, you know, Van Halen, U2, Pretenders, John Cougar, uh, Priest. I mean, all the bands. That's what was going on back in the day. It just seemed like everyone was good. You know what I mean? It, it was almost ridiculous. You're just like, I mean, when you go to Coachella, there's a lot of bands you skip. You know, you're like, nah, I don't need to go to that, you know, whatever. But there was no skipping a band on these days. You're like, I mean, just that new wave day, uh, the first day, you know, you, you got to look at like Men at Work had a huge hit on the radio. Stray Cats was absolutely blowing up. Flock of Seedles, Seagulls, you know. Oingo Boingo, Wall of Voodoo. I'm on a Mexican radio. In excess? Come on, man. I mean, all these bands have one thing in common. It's great songs. And we still hear them on the radio to this day. So uh, pretty interesting. Three-day weekend, rock and roll. It was $20 a day. I got all three. I went all three days. There was a fourth day. It was a country day. And... Uh, that's what Memorial Day weekend reminds me of, of just complete rock and roll. It's always represented the kickoff of the summer and, uh, and partying, you know, which is wild. Let's see what else. Uh, tragic, man. It just it seems like I'm, I'm going to be saying this every week on my podcast. We lost another great one. It seems like I'm going to be saying that every week, and that's just... Uh, Part of getting old, you know, the greats go. Greg Allman, lost him on Saturday, 69 years old. Greg Allman, man. And as I uh, enter into my uh, 50s, uh, you know, and think about how much I'm getting into the Grateful Dead, I really look back to the Allman Brothers was really my ground zero of jam bands, you know, uh, it was Almond Brothers, Mother Hips, and then uh, Black Crows, and that's the, that. That was my uh, introduction to jam bands. Was the Almond Brothers? I remember. I remember being in Nevada. I worked construction. I used to drink at this bar after called the Bit of Honey. And I'd go in there. Greg Almond would be in there. It's just like, uh, I guess, late eighties. It's hard to, it's a, it's a blur, but somewhere around there. And he would be in there just fucking getting rummied up, man, and, and, and causing trouble. The guy was a gangster. I loved him, man. He was a full outlaw. He'd be like, fuck you guys. Rah, rah. And there would be all these epic stories around Marion County. Craig Allman was here last night in his Corvette, just fucking gassed, man. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember the first time I saw Greg Allman, actually. I was at, I believe it was New George's, when it was the old New George's, the one where the dead film Touch of Grey, not, not when they uh, redid it all. And I went there, I, I went for some reason, you know, it wasn't like I was some uh, Greg Allman fan or whatever, I, I, it's like early on, you know. And Greg Allman was playing, he comes out, he's playing the B3, and he whips into Stormy Monday. And I was like, holy shit, man. This guy is great. There he is up there. You know, the long blonde hair. Just hammering away on the B3. And immediately I fell in love with Greg Allman. I had the same hair, long straight hair. I grew out some sideburns. Got some fucking fry boots. Some bell bottoms, you know. I was like, I want to be in the Allman Brothers, man. And I was hooked. Immediately grabbed that. Uh, live at the Fillmore Played it one billion times At least And there I was On to my Greg Almond And Almond Brothers journey I can't even imagine What it was like to see him back in the day With uh, Dwayne And, and uh, Barry Oakley And uh, you know The whole original lineup Had to be just had to be insane to see Dwayne Allman up there just ripping on the slide and his brother just killing it on the B3. And Dickie Betts, very underrated Dickie Betts. Don't hear a lot about him and the Allman Brothers, but, you know, he wrote a lot of the great tunes. And, you know, of course, 
I fell in love with that song, Melissa. And then, of course, Whippin' Post. I mean, that Whippin' Post on the uh, Fillmore record is just unbelievable. How fucking great is that band? Southern rock, they were a jam band, they were country, they had all this flavor. And like I said, it was my first introduction to jam bands. And once I start seeing them, Warren Hayes is in the band, and they put out that epic two-record uh, two set, An Evening with the Allman Brothers. And I remember I bought uh, the second set. It was called Evening with the Allman Brothers, second set. And it had that song, Soul Shine, that Warren Haynes wrote. And I fucking love that song, man. I love that song. I was like, God. And Warren was just, I mean, to play in the Allman Brothers, you had to be a fucking, uh, a, a master, man. You couldn't just be some fool and play in the Allman Brothers, man. You had to be a master of your instrument. And of course, the all-time best, Eat a Peach, which I have on vinyl, two different copies. I also have the Fillmore East on vinyl, uh, you know, the reissue and the original, Decade of Hits. Uh, it goes on and on and on, you know, Brothers and Sisters. The first record, I got that, oh man, the Allman Brothers debut, so great. All these, all these records they put out were just so original and so good. Oh, this is my favorite one. I forgot about this one. I own this one. Uh, Sunny at S uh, Stony Brook, New York, 9, 1971. Uh, September 1971. If you haven't heard this one, it is fucking smoking. I forgot all about this. I love this one. Anyway. I'm going to get more into the Allman Brothers this week. I think Michael Devin and I are going to uh, whip up an Allman Brothers episode because uh, you can't just talk about them in a five-minute, five-minute, you know, intro on my podcast. It's just too iconic of a band. And uh, we'll get into that. But long live Greg Allman, man. You know, he lived it hard. And... Um, and now he's gone, 69, but I don't think he would trade anything for it. That guy was an outlaw. He, he partied, he lived it, and 100% uh, rock and roll. Speaking of outlaw and 100% of rock and roll, my guest today is the definition of 100% rock and roll frontman. And uh, I'll tell you, let me tell you a little story since I, I played music uh, and and sang. If you know, back in the day, to find a front man was almost impossible. To find a good front man, you know, it was just, it was just, you know, you just settled. A good front man and a good drummer were hard to find. Guitar players were everywhere because Eddie Van Halen and Jimmy Page. And Randy Rhodes, everybody wanted to be the guitar god. But singers, uh, like myself, usually it just happened because no one else would do it. And you go, I'll, I'll sing, you know. And to find one that you say, oh my God, that's a fucking front man. I'm talking about a front man that when you take out an ad looking for a front man, you put that guy's name in there, like wanted front man uh and this would this is a, a typical front man ad uh in a in the uh like recycler in la they had a magazine called the recycler and you would uh put ads in there looking for musicians and it was so fucking funny because they were all so cliche and the same but it would be basically it would run like this wanted front man in the in the vein of david lee roth Robert Plant, and uh, who else would they mention at the time? Yeah, oh, Steven Tyler. Okay, let me redo the ad. Wanted, front man with chops. They would always say that. With, with vocal chops. We are a rock band with major label interest. Looking for a lead singer. Long hair and good looks a must. 
no fatties, must have attitude, and no Yoko Ono girlfriend. No druggies, but weed and booze is cool. Let's take on the world. <laughs> that would be the fucking, that would be the ad. Always. No, no druggies, but weed and booze is cool. No fatties would be in there. Straight up, no fatties. Must Long hair and good looks a must. My point is, if this guy walked in, my guest today, Sebastian Bach, you would fucking lose your mind because you would go, oh my God, we are going to be rock stars. To have this guy walk into your audition and sing something like The Youth Gone Wild or 18 in Life or I Remember You or Quicksand Jesus or uh, Slave to the Grind or Big Guns, you would just be like, Holy fuck. You would pray the guy wouldn't get snatched up by somebody else. That's all you would do, man, because that is how rare a front man is. And my man today, my guest, Sebastian Bach, is the definition of front man. What comes with front man, a real front man, is the lunacy, the 100% eat, sleep, shit, rock and roll, uh, as the great Henry Rollins would say, a man that you look at and would think this guy could do nothing else. If he doesn't sing in a band, he will be dead. That is a front man and that is Sebastian Bach. And what comes with that, when you need and want a, an excellent front man, you're also going to get an artist, which means there's not going to be, you know, any way to contain this animal. And the reason I say this is watch out what you wish for. You wish for the best front man, the lunatic, the wild man. And when you get that, all of a sudden you're like, oh, no, he's crazy. And, you know, oh, oh. But, yeah, that's what a great front man is. You don't pull a tiger out of the cage and not expect it to fucking scratch your eyes out, man. A wild tiger. And as corny as that sounds, that's what a great front man was. And the front man is uh, pretty much gone these days. There's some, some good ones out there. Um, Jay Buchanan from Rival Sons. Excellent front man. People that you look at and go, look at that guy. He's a fucking star. I'm so happy to have this guy on. Uh, I grew up to his music, and I can't believe in 2017 I got to sit down with him for over two hours and... Uh, and find out who this man is. And he's exactly who I thought he was, 100% rock and roll. And I can't thank him enough for doing the podcast. And all I can say is, as I look at it every day and I see people uh, passing away, uh, both camps need to get it together. And it, it, look, if you were in Skid Row and you didn't want to do it anymore, like, hey, that was my 80s thing, I would respect that. That's great. There's people that have moved on, that's cool. But if you're in Skid Row and you don't have the original lineup and they're all alive, you're just, you're just cheating yourself, man. Once you've had the taste of the real fucking, the real smashing shit, it's tough to ever not think about that. So hopefully... Hopefully they get it together. But in the meantime, go out and see Sebastian. He's going to be out on the road in June and celebrate this guy's amazing vocals and his lunacy. I love him. And I hope you guys all enjoy this episode. Before I do get into the episode, just a couple quick things. I've got a, a bunch of great shows coming up. June 2nd and 3rd, Portland. That's this weekend. Helium with Polly Shore. June 5th, Denver Comedy Works with Pauly Shore. June 8, 9, and 10, I'll be with Joey Diaz at the Berea Improv. June 14th through the 18th, Minnesota, I'm headlining House of Comedy at the Mall of America. June 21st, Belly Room, I headline at the Comedy Store. June 26th through uh, 27, 28, and 30, I'll be at the Stand in New York City. June 29th, I'm headlining One Night Boston at Nick's Comedy Stop. June 14th and 15th, I'll be at the Grand Rapids with Bill Burr. 
June, oh, sorry, that's July 14th and 15th. July 27, 28, 29, Toronto, Queen Elizabeth Theater uh, with uh, Ian Edwards, Red Band, and Sam Tripoli. I love all you guys. Last but not least, this episode is brought to you by the great St. Cross Jewelers. If you're looking for a Rolex, don't go anywhere except for St. Cross right here in Los Angeles. This is my secret favorite Rolex official dealer in Koreatown. These guys are an official Rolex dealer. Don't buy on the gray market. Get your watch from St. Cross so you get that five-year warranty and that peace of mind. There's nothing worse than buying a watch online and finding out later it's fake. Oh, yeah, I saved a couple grand, but oops, it's a fake Rolex. Don't do that, man. I've been there. You'll lose sleep. Get yourself an official real Rolex from St. Cross Jewelers. Tell them I sent you. Go in and see Andy. St. Cross Jewelers, 213-738-0808. Ask for Andy. Tell him you heard about it on Let There Be Talk. Here it is. Keep the candles lit. Happy three-day weekend. Enjoy your Monday today. Sebastian Bach. All right, here we are, another episode of Let There Be Talk. Fantastic guest today, man. After a four-year hounding, Mr. Sebastian Bach. Yes. And how did you blow it, though, dude? I didn't blow it. Today it's called... Let there be Bach. Let there be Bach. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, that is fucking good, dude. I just thought of that. Let there I be invent- Bach. I invented that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. We're at your house, man. Yes. And I love it because it's like uh, it's like it would be like my house. You know, it's just rock and roll, right? That's all that matters. I, um, you know, in the last couple of years, the the the. Uh, Vinyl revolution has been revelatory for yeah. me. Yeah. And just talking to you for you too, because you know, that's what I grew up on and yeah. that's the sound that I love. Yeah. And that's my hobby now. I go yep. collect these albums. This is my own album here, kicking and screaming. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's in the background. And You're I'm the giving, first guy I'm ever to my, do that. I'm giving myself clearance to be on this show <laughs> musically. I'm clearing yeah. it. You're uh, right the, here. You heard it right here. By the way, my neighbor is Heidi at Amoeba, and she oh. said she has four records holding for you. And come She's get your them. neighbor? Yeah, right next oh door. Oh, my god. She was my landlord. Oh, my. What? Yeah, and then the, she doesn't let, she doesn't, she's not the landlord anymore. Now she just lives there. But yeah, she uh, lives she's right. She's really nice. Yeah. Um, Amoeba is such a great place, and I love Los Angeles because there's literally so many record stores. It's incredible, right? I mean, Ventura, yeah, uh, all up and down, you know. Gimme, uh, Gimme, and Highland Park. I've been there. Been there? No, oh, you got to fucking go there. Oh, you got to go there. Ventura's got two, two yeah. really good ones. Oh yeah, I love the the one here. I go to it all the time. Oh, uh, Freak, Freak Beat. Beat. Yeah. yeah, Freak Beat's good. Atomic. Yeah, in Burbank. Yeah. Uh, Rockaway, Rockaway Records, yeah, which has a lot of rare, rare items. And I went in there the other day. the uh, The guy in front of me was the dude who killed Darth Vader in Star Wars. Oh, Adam. Oh, wait. I, I don't know his name, but the actor in the last Star Wars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the fight. Oh yeah. I go. How do I know this dude? He was buying as much vinyl as he could carry. Star Wars money. Yeah. Fucking like, Star fuck, Wars money. Like everything. He couldn't carry <laughs> He's more the, vinyl. Those are the guys and then that I was are making like, shit go up yeah, and, he, and I was laughing, and he was laughing. We were, I, I couldn't play it. And then I go, holy shit, that's the dude that killed Darth Vader. And the guy, Rogway, goes, because he comes in here all the time. And I go, that's cool. And he goes, you know who was in here yesterday? And I go, who? He goes, oh, I don't know. Have you ever heard of Robert Plant? Whoa. And I go, what are you talking about? He, and then he said... Two days ago, Jimmy Page was at Rockaway Records. I go, what the hell are they buying? He goes, like, obscure uh, blues artists? Yeah. Uh, Odessa, someone or other? Or- Just, yeah, yeah. Well, Jim, that's Jimmy Page, man. Like, that's, that's all that's he does. That's how cool L.A. is, yeah. is that the dudes in Led Zeppelin go record shopping here. <laughs> I saw you have the Golden God photo there, the, the Robert Plant, man. Yeah. It's so, it, 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 you know, when you think about L.A., dude, 
I think about the riot house. I think about the rainbow, and mm-hmm. I think about the forum and those days of Zeppelin playing. That is, and, and also Van Halen once they start. Oh yeah, you know that is really the essence of L.A. And the Doors earlier, yes. isn't it crazy? Uh huh. And um, you know, sadly, this Sunday we're going to be at the Rainbow for Mario's uh, memorial. Yeah, man. And he it was 93 years he old. He lived a great life, Jeez. though, man. A great life. So, you know? you know. I'm just hoping the Rainbow sticks around because every time I drive down Sunset, there's a new apartment building. Shh. And it's going straight up. Yep. And then the rainbow's just like right there. I know. Like, they're, like you know, they're tearing down the House of Blues uh, <sighs> this week. And, you know, really? yeah, the only thing left is going to be the comedy store, the whiskey, the Roxy, and the oh rainbow. That's gosh. it. You know, like they're putting all these hotels up, but what are the people going to do? There's not going to be anything to do. They're going to be like, this used to be great. Oh, my god. Stay gosh. in your room now. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say about that, but maybe, maybe it'll stay. Oh, I, no, hell yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I, I absolutely hope so. Now, uh, dude. Fuck, I forgot about that riff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting ready to go back out on the road. Yeah? On uh, June. So I'm playing all of June in yep. the United States. Who's in the band? Uh, right now, who's in the band this June is, uh, I can't really see. I can't say I can't say that right now. Oh, you can't. I can say the drummer is oh. Andy Sinisi from, okay. uh, who was recommended to me by my friend Adam Jones from Tool. Oh yeah, which is random. Oh, wow, you know player. Adam? He lives two houses down from here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and we hang out all the time. He's one of my new buddies. Yeah, yeah. He's right, right down there. That's it. you know who used to live right over here behind Oil Can Harry's Who's in that? the fucking eighties was uh, Adler. Steve Steven Adler, Adler. Really? up behind Oil Can Harry's there, wow. man. All <laughs> right, on. Yeah, I remember going to his house when Davey Vane had that band Road Crew. With what him. year was that? I think it was probably nine. Uh, when? Yeah, when was he out of GNR by ninety one? Yeah, so right around ninety two, probably. I was at his house in ninety one. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember where it was. Yeah, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Man, he, he, I was just, you know what I forgot all about it, too, was when Skid Row did that UK tour, Vane opened up, man. That's that, right. I'm from San Francisco, and they oh, were- Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel like, why do I feel you're from Canada? No, man. What the fuck's wrong with me? <laughs> you're from Canada, Oh, yeah, me. right. That's me. <laughs> Whoops. Well, I do have very deep roots in San Francisco. Yeah? Yeah, they're gray. Um, anyways, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got you. <laughs> oh my anyways, my dad. Yeah. Wait, here. Okay. My grandma yeah. taught English at Pleasant Hill Intermediate for 45 years. Whoa, really? It's from the 40s. Pleasant Hill? Yeah, Pleasant wow. Hill. Wow. And uh, my dad went to Akolani's. Whoa. Uh, Orinda. I was conceived at my Annie Margaret's house in Orinda. Wow, man. I, it was a weird conception. That would have been crazy <laughs> if you grew up in San Fran. Well, I, 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 that's where I, if you read my book, which I can tell you didn't, thanks. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> hey, dude. I'm waiting Because you the, would know this. I need the audio did. version. <laughs> you need the audio version? Yeah, it's on there. Oh, okay. But, that's um, how I go on planes. I tell the story in my book that the very first roller coaster I ever went on was the Big Dipper at Santa Cruz. Oh, the best, right? And that's also the day, the very day is 1975, that I first saw Kiss, and I didn't understand what the fuck it was, and it's in my book. Yeah. It was on the boardwalk. Oh, they had like the prizes? Yeah, walking down the promenade of that, that big case Love in it. the building yep and they had like the jumbo kiss poster wow and i was i tell this story like i was walking with my dad i go what the fuck yeah what is i don't know i don't get what that is yeah and it, I, how I, old I, were you seven seven yeah you know like, everybody we all say that uh kiss is the gateway to a drug of rock and roll, you know. And if you're I, I our still age. love it because you know, with the vinyl explosion, collecting Kiss vinyl is so much fun. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole uh, Facebook page called "Kiss My Wax," and it's literally where I spend the most time on the internet. I don't give a. It's fun. Yeah, it's fucking fun. Yeah, it's not about gossip or negativity or bullshit. It's about collecting records. 
Yep. And what do you got? And oh, I got this. Fuck you. I got this in Argentina. Well, I got this in fucking Korea, you bitch. Yeah, all the And it's all like, all it's presents. like, oh, I got this. Yeah. What's your favorite Kiss record? That's a tough one. I, I love Rock and Roll Over. I yeah. love the song Take Me yeah. for some reason. So great. Because I remember being on the, on the um, playground with my friends, and we thought the word said, Put your hand in my pocket, grab onto my rocket. Yeah. Feel so good to see you, Lucille. Baby, got to know, do you want to blow? <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't believe, I don't even know if that's the words. Yeah, I, I think do you want to go? Right? Is it, do you want to blow? I, I think so. Because to us, yeah. that was fucking kick ass. Oh, yeah. Everything about Kiss, man. Baby got to know do you want to blow? We're like, are you fucking serious? That's I, go, what... I go creatures of the night, <laughs> My dude. finger's just astraying. Her mama didn't know she was there. No. We're like, holy fuck. You go the creatures of the like night? That was like penthouse form. Hell, yeah. Early rub outs. Like, like, listen to this song. <laughs> so that fucked me up for life. You go the Creatures of the Night record? I love it, but let's get technical. The yeah. very first pressing, which I have over there. Yeah. The drums are mixed so outrageously loud. Yeah. And in subsequent pressings, they like wimped it out or turned it down in the mix. Wow. And the first pressing of that is yeah. outrageous. Yeah, that fucking record's of great, that. man. Yeah, I like a lot of tunes on there. I love Vinnie Vincent, too, that, you know, when he... I think love might be a strong word. I know, I'm... Wait, you love Vinnie I, Vincent? I loved him in... See, that's a true Kiss fan. <laughs> I loved him the on Ankh that Warrior. tour. On that tour, the Ankh Warrior. <laughs> Hell yeah, Motley Crue opened, Shout at the Devil. I was at the San Francisco Civic. I saw and, that in Toronto and Accept opened. Oh, man. Well, Both I had two. Motley, and yeah. then they, uh, you know... Uh, Vinnie Vincent had the Randy Rhodes yeah. gold colored you know, one. Going into that show, I didn't even know that Ace wasn't in the band. Yeah. I saw the t shirt. I go, what the fuck? What's, what's, what's up with know? the Ankh Warrior? <laughs> <laughs> the Ankh I was Warrior. like, now I have to fathom the Ankh Warrior. <laughs> the Ankh Warrior. <laughs> God, man. You, uh, you know, I think back to the, to the days, man. You, you were on. <laughs> Ground zero of some of the monstrous tours of all time. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, you look at you. You did the New Jersey tour, which was huge, Jovi record. You know what sucks though, dude? What? When you say that to me, yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is Chris Cornell. Oh, and, and I just, you know, I can't tell you that I was his, uh, you know, a great friend of his. Right. But we took them on the Bad Motor Finger tour for three weeks, which is, you know, a month out of your yeah, life. That's a long time. Well, it's not that long. On but, the road, but it, though, it feels yeah, like a long time. It was a lot of gigs. Yeah. A lot of people saw us. And including the gig we did at the Fox Theater in Detroit. Wow. That's where we, we brought them there. I Probably for the first time. I, I don't know for sure, but... It's That's fucking shat. It's, it's sh brutal. It's, it's brutal. That's it's the brutal, word. It's brutal, dude. It's like, brutal. Like, it's supposed to be fun. Rock and roll is supposed to be fun, man. It, it really is. It, it, that's <laughs> interesting that you say that, that it you just, brought them out, because, you know, there's so much weight put into that, you know, grunge killed 80s rock and everything, and it's so wrong. It's really that the labels killed it, because they, you know. And the press, too. And the press, Because yeah. I talked to Dave Grohl about that whole thing, and he's like, dude, that was a fucking press. That was what he told me. He goes, that was some shit. That was all in the press and magazines to sell magazines. He yep. goes, he goes. We're like the same guy. Like we play rock. Yeah, we get up there and rock. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like you guys him. brought Pantera out on tour. On you know, their first tour, and you know, and Soundgarden was on that tour too. I think we did one show, all three of us. Wow. I know we did. I think it was in. I can't remember where it was. Maybe Chicago. But we did one shows: Skid Row, Pantera, and Soundgarden. And uh, I think a dime bag. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a Chris Cornell. Yeah, it's brutal, man. I mean, I'm you know, it's just the mood I'm in right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I'm so thankful oh, that I, we're know, alive. It's so, it's so weird that you get so affected by a musician dying. That's like not, you know, you don't know them that great, or 
they're not in your family, but when you listen to someone's music for decades, yeah, it it feels like they're part of your family. Absolutely, like in a weird, really weird way. Well, better than you your know? family because you're with your them family all the is time. jerks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean so I'm just joking about that. That's how art is, though, man. You get you fall in love so with weird. something. Yes, you know, I just saw the, the Grateful Dead movie yesterday, and the the it's a four hour documentary. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not into the dead, you gotta you, you go check this out because you realize the weight yeah. that was all put on Jerry Garcia, man. Mm -hmm. Like he's the Messiah, he's the God, you know, and and he couldn't even leave his fucking hotel room, Could, man. Yeah. After a while, that just is brutal. Well, you know that reminds me of the Eagles documentary, yeah. History of the Eagles. Love it. And right as I was getting into that, and like Joe Walsh in that thing like i flipped on how cool he was and i bought his whole catalog and got into that and then glenn fry dropped dead yeah <laughs> i know that was crazy. and i i could have seen them at the forum oh, and yeah. i was doing something like a fucking idiot oh. Oh. i think you were oh. it's like right before he died i was like oh, i'll see him next time there there's not a next there's time. not a next time i you tell missed people that it. all the you time you missed man. it buddy yeah and when people say hey i see you're coming to town but i'll catch you next oh. time i'm like you don't know if there's, well, there's a few things you could be dead or yeah. there won't be a next time because you didn't come out and there wasn't enough people now the club won't there book you go. well there's the white elephant in the room fuck yeah dude yeah, that's, that's some yeah. real shit that right is some real shit it's 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 a it's an interesting thing, man. You've been playing music all your life since mm -hmm. what you're like 14, 15 years old. Yeah. And you know how old are you now? I'm fifty one. Forty nine. Forty nine. <laughs> you're gonna be fifty coming yes. up. <laughs> My next birthday is fifty. Yeah. Wow, man, that, that is, is crazy. Life is short, right? Oh yeah, it's short. It is short. It, it's shorter than you think. Yeah. yeah. It, it's short, but I still can't remember 20 years ago. You know, I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you know, in my book that I put out, I, I told a lot of stories from that time. How, you could remember them? If, if it's quiet enough and there's nobody in the house. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really concentrating. Yes, I can remember. Yeah. A lot of it. It's wild. but but then again I'm I remember it from my perspective. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure if one of the other guys in Skid Row wrote a book, it would be, for, you know, <laughs> different than my Absolutely. book. Absolutely. <laughs> That's why the but, dirt was great because yeah, it was four guys right. on the same page well, going, "No, that ain't how it happened. Here's how." Well, it happened. that is, you know, that would require like communication. Yeah, but you know, we we were talking about putting a reunion together. But we couldn't even handle like a group text. That's incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. Wait, wait, it was like after a couple texts, fucking just misery. How does the text? How does the text? Start? I'm like, can we get in the fucking room? Yeah. No, that's out of the question. How does the text start? Hey, it's me and Rachel. How goes, does hey. it? How does it start? Yeah. I'm not gonna name names because okay. Lord knows, you know, it's enough of a mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um. Hey, we want your, you know, we want to talk about maybe getting some, getting back in the same room together. Yep. You know, let's let you, you know, let's let people work. Let's see if we can do this. Right on. This is gonna be simple, man. Yep. This will be great. And then uh, I'll read on Blabbermouth. You know, the singer of Dragon Force is the guy. And then I'll text, "What the fuck's up, man? Yeah. Like, really? Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's it, what happened with this? Oh no, no, no. What? Well, then why don't your manager call my manager? So then their manager won't talk to me, and they won't talk to my guy. So what the fuck's going on? That's and then and then there's gigs booked. Like there's we had gigs. <laughs> like we had like a whole tour. Wow. This summer at all those you know rock in the rain. Yeah. It was all gonna happen, but then it it uh, just didn't happen for. You'd have to do an interview with those guys. Uh, yeah. But as we said, everybody's dying, so what's up? It, yeah, it, it makes no <laughs> sense. Like, Just go separate It's buses. like, how long? What do you want to do in your 70s? Van, like, Van Halen does it. Just separate buses, walk on. Uh, you know? You know? I, 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 it's too simple for me to even say, no way. Like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what the fight's about. Yeah. 
I yeah, mean, I, I, I tried to figure out what it was about, too, as I was reading and reading and reading. And, and you know, of course, it's this infamous, you booked this kiss gig. Oh, who I, cares? I know, right? Like, and that's whatever. in 96. How could you? There has who to be some <laughs> other shit, right? Like, how could it be that? Well, you know, I, I know that I've said rotten shit. Of course. But, but the thing is, hey, the I'm e- only a human being. And another thing is, part of my sense of humor is like... Yeah, I'll tell it. I'll say something funny that I think's funny that they'll take, not funny. Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. To me. I could go into more detail, but I don't know if I should. But I don't, well, know. I don't know. Well, no, for real though. I'm just trying to figure it out because it, when you look at it, it makes no well, sense I, at all. Uh, the last contact I had with them, they did a gig down in uh, uh, Texas, Skid Row, opening up for Tiffany. Tiffany. <laughs> and I, I thought I didn't think it was true because somebody sent me a poster on Twitter. Right. And um, I, could, I thought it was fake. Yeah. Because it was 80s night. Tiffany, Flavor Flav, and Skid Row with the Skid Row logo on there. I go, this is not true. Yeah. So I, I, I sent it to Eddie Trell. He goes, that's, not, that's bullshit. Yeah. So then I did a gig in Jersey, and this guy came up backstage. He goes, hey, I'm Rachel's best friend. I go, dude, please, can you ask him what the fuck is up with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the next morning I woke up, and it was like, you know, just how you're ripping me apart and, and, pu- and to my friends. And I go, dude, I'm just fucking asking a question. Like, I'm just, yeah. is this true? Is this not true? Can I not just fucking... I'm not ripping anybody apart. Yeah. I'm like, are you guys opening for Tiffany? Like, it, it's a question yeah. that I could maybe ask, being that, you know, when people see the Skid Row logo, most of them think I'm going to be there. Yeah. So maybe that's something I could maybe address. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, that was the last contact I had with them. Wow. <laughs> Open for Tiffany. Now that's crazy I was too. Just asking. When you think about in '96 where they said we don't Soundgarden open for Kiss, open. we're fucking big. You know what I mean? And now they're opening for Tiffany. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's you know, this is all happening at the time of the Guns N' Roses reunion where I'm jamming on stage with Guns N' Roses. Yeah, we could probably maybe do a gig with them. I truly maybe. thought that was going to go down it secretly. I thought happened. that was secretly going to go down, but. That again, that would require the c- completion of a group text. Yeah. And that's <laughs> fucking way too crazy. Like, <laughs> oh my God, dude. <laughs> like agreeing on, yeah. a, on a thread of a text. I think that's I, impossible. I think you are like the monster front man. And, and and eventually people like him or, or the band are like, oh, man, we can't take that. But that's what you want in a front man. Dangerous, Dude. insane, an animal, what right? What can't they take? Success? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Look at my house. Yeah, where yeah. I live. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I do very well. Yeah. And I pick and choose what the fuck I want to do. Yeah. I'm lucky to be able to do that. It's, but, you know, I just look at the clock. It's crazy, right? I look at the time. And you can still sing the shit. Well, now that I live in L.A., I have a L.A. band going. So I'm rehearsing all the time, like last night. So that's the way we always used to get good. Instead of having a band where you're flying in musicians from all over the country. Right. Getting them hotels and plane flights. Yeah. That ends up. No chemistry. Well, no, you no have warming it, but it's, it up. It's almost like a business, <laughs> right? Like that. Whereas, if you have a band like that, that you all live close to each other, and you rehearse, I mean, you write, you can record, write. Like that's like a real band. Yeah, I know it seems crazy to people, but for the last twenty years, I've been flying people all over the fucking world every time I want to do something. Yeah, and, I, and I'm like, dude. Like, I, I want to rehearse. I want to. Yeah. Maybe you don't need to rehearse, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> I like to rehearse. I have to. I do. I, I like it. I get my pipes glowing. Like that. <clears throat> yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, t- it's tough not to talk to you without talking about Skid Row because it was such a big part of my life growing up. It was such a oh, major cool. fucking band, you know? 
I mean, it was absolutely. I remember the day that the first record comes out. No way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I'm with a couple buddies. Also, the Bullet Boys record came out. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so the, we're in the car. Up in- yeah. And I said, fuck it, Bullet Boys are going to sell way more than really? Skid Row. And the guy, and my buddy goes, well, I was just thinking, like, look, this thing is like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it, was- it seemed to be all over yes. instantly. And then my buddy goes, no way, man, Skid Row's going to crush him. And then a year later, he goes, pay up, motherfucker. And I was like, wow, I'll gladly pay Dude, your up. buddy knows what's up. I know what's up, too. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just looking at, back then, Warner Brothers was a machine. You know what I mean? If you were yeah, on Warner had Brothers. Ted Temple, yeah, man. Yeah, right. And it was and like. that video oh, was yeah. killer. And it was the new Van Halen. And it sounded so much like it sounded, Van Halen. Yeah, and they were yeah. great, you know. But, I love that song. But then eventually, you know, you had. We had ballads. That, that, I was just going to say, you had what you need, man. You got to have the rocker, like big guns, to get yeah. the dudes in. But then you had 18 in life, yeah. and it's fucking over with, man. Do you no. know what's fucking crazy? What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that, like, iTunes has a chart, top selling metal songs? Yeah. <laughs> I remember you is in the top five, like, yesterday. I, I'm not making this wow. up. Wow, are you it's kidding? It's like Enter Sandman. Uh, this is of this is of all the songs that everybody around the world is buying today. Right on a fucking iTunes metal. I remember he's like number four. Wow, like in the, it's in the top five. Like that is in 2017. Fucking, like three days ago, somebody said, "Go, dude, look at this." I go, "What in the?" Fuck? Wow, it's like Enter Sandman. Yeah, uh, I re- you know. Yeah. So you know, that is lasting the test of time for sure. That's incredible. Now, now think of all the songs that have come out. And you got publishing then. on that. You got well, that back yes. from Jovi. Well, there's a lot of different levels and types of yeah. publishing. You yeah, know, yeah. Performance and yeah, writers. mechanicals, all that. Yeah. I, I got. I, I I get a I get a piece of that shit. Wow. <laughs> You wrote the lyrics on that, right? No, not all of them. Oh, no, oh, no, I got you. What'd you write on that first record? Anything? Um, well, stuff that I wrote, basically, that you would know is every time the melody goes up. Right. Into live nine to five, and he worked his finger through the right. bell. All of that shit was like, can I do this here? Like, nobody yeah. writes that into the song. Yeah, exactly. Flavor, Child, blue, flavor Child and of essence. Way. All of those high notes so i like can i do this here they're like yeah do that there yeah but i didn't realize that i was like contributing to the melody right i also didn't think anybody was gonna fucking really buy it really like i didn't know that like yeah and also i was a kid what are you 18 on that yeah it's 19 or 19 something something like that i love that story man they see you like somebody sees you at a fucking wedding that was sing- Mark Weiss's wedding yeah. singing at a fucking with Zach Wild. Zach Wild. singing with Zach Wild. Yeah. and his and- name wasn't Zach Wild. Though. Right, yeah. yeah, and and fucking next thing you know, you auditioned, you're in Skid Row, and you guys got a record deal, and your whole fucking life changes. It's got to be crazy, dude. I mean, come on. It was on. crazy, but you know, the, all that is detailed explicitly in the book. Like, I get it, but I'm just saying. I, I'm just I, saying, I played like, music. I get you're pumping your book, but I'm saying. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm yeah. just saying there's so much detail yeah. that I kind of compartmentalize. I'm, it's not always on the tip of my brain. Yeah. But it's all in that. Yeah. But um, I don't really have anything else to compare it to. You, you only have one life. All I know is that I'm uh, in the. In the ever since the book came out, I've had legal stuff going on, which has like really um, made it very difficult for me to work right now. Really, some legal stuff having to do with my past. Like what? I can't. I don't. I don't really want to go into it so much, but uh, I have to take care of some legal things in order to um, be. I'm going through just really hard shit legally right now. Wow. And, I, and if the fans are like, why isn't he on Twitter all the time or whatever? I'm just dealing with some life shit that is fucking miserable. And it, it all happened to me the very day that my book came out. The day was after. Was it from something in the book? No, no. Oh, I got you. It was from like, it, was just, it just has, it's like 
uh, Alamo, like the government, oh. and stuff like that. Like child support stuff and stuff like, like that? I, you know, if you read a Chris Rock interview yeah, recently. Yeah, I got you, I got you. I know what you're saying. Or yeah. who's the other guy going through that? Lopez? or the, Right. They do these inter- I could give a shittier interview than Chris Rock about what my life is like. Your right ex-wife. Now. I have to, I'm going through stuff and it all happened. The day that my book came out, I was walking to Kennedy, the chick on Fox News live, to go live on television, Yeah. right? Yep. Day my book came out and I'm walking to the thing and I get this news on my phone Yeah. <laughs> that would drop people to their knees or make guys jump off a fucking building or something. Wow. Other guys, I go, I can't fucking do this interview. And it, it's all live and every, everybody's there. And then I go, dude, you have to do this fuck. You have to do this interview. Oh, and fuck. And I, I could never watch it, but it was the hardest thing I think I've ever had to do in rock. I uh. had to sit there and just go, and just compartmentalize like I never had to. Wow. And not like break the fuck down right on live television. That's crazy. And then I can't. And then I had to go to Rolling Stone after. I couldn't go. I, I, I literally couldn't go to Rolling Stone. Okay, that's yeah. how fucked up this was. Wow. And I'm dealing with this every day. And I'm just saying, if the fans like, where's his new record or whatever? I'm going through shit right now. I can't. I can't. I have to deal with this life stuff that's well, fucking staggering. It's just unbelievable. Other guys my age. That have gone through divorce. Like Willie Nelson, I've heard him do interviews. Yeah. And he goes, have you ever been through a divorce? And he goes, if you have, you know, it's it's not, it's fucking misery. It's rough. It's all really about the rough. lawyers, too. It ain't about the people, right? But it doesn't right? seem to ever end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm happily married now. Uh, this is five years ago. Six fucking years ago. And it's worse now than it ever was and it's like i don't know how guys out there that go through this shit deal with this shit yeah i just drink and smoke and (laughs) i just drink and smoke there was a period where you quit drinking yeah that didn't work out so good to me (laughs) that seemed like such a setup man when you were doing i was trying to do i was trying to do the whole um oh Oh, super group. Yeah. That was miserable. That was just like so. That was fucking misery. I remember flying back because they're all like, I'm drinking wine. They're like, so, Sebastian, your dad just died. How does it feel? Yeah. Man. What the fuck do you mean? How does it feel? Yeah. How the fuck would it feel to you? <laughs> <laughs> and then that's on TV. You're like, whoa, this guy's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I learned on that show is that a little drinking goes a long way when you're shooting a television program. Yeah, they'll just you keep, don't need to have keep much, cutting it out. But cutting it. Just a little bit. Yeah, they keep showing it in the key spots. There's Sebastian oh. drinking again. Hey, he's drinking again. Hey, the editors. Oh, like they I, love it. Have another one. I was talking to these editors and they go, I can make this show go any way I want. Like a fucking, I'm, I could paint, oh I could paint Sebastian to be a dick. I could paint fucking the neighbor come in here, whatever, you know? Well, you know, I remember flying home because it was a two week shoot. Yeah. And I go, that wasn't so bad. It's going to be cool because it was actually fun doing it. Right. Wasn't fun watching it. <laughs> but I remember flying home going, it's going to be fucking great. I go, two weeks, I only cried once when the guy was asking me about my dead father. Yeah. Then I then I get home. <laughs> I put on the TV, me crying about my dead father is the commercial for the show. Oh. So it's on like every hour. <laughs> I go, oh my motherfucking, I go, I can't even believe this is happening. Wow. But you know, I mean, I remember being in that house Saying, okay, we're having dinner. What time is it? Six o'clock. Okay, cool. So the, the, there was always wine and beers in there for whoever wanted them. Scotty yeah. Ian would drink beers. Yep. But I'd start drinking wine about 5 p.m. Yeah. And then for some reason, dinner kind of would like never really show up. Like, oh, that one. So, like, wait, oh, for wait for you to get oh, drunk. Wait for you to get drunk. Where's fucking dinner? It's, it's coming. Oh, boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to say they set you up, dude. Fucking pizza. 
They set you up. <laughs> Blinded. You know, oh, they set whatever. you up, dude. That was a long time ago, but it is available on YouTube if you want to check out the tragedy. <laughs> You've done so much Super stuff, group. Dude. Well, Super group. Super group. Well, it's a group. <laughs> <laughs> that was the review. Really? In TV God, it said. Or Entertainment Weekly. Super group. Well, it's a group. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, That's man. That's like shit sandwich. You ever talk to Ted Nugent at all? You know, not since... you know, No, he yeah. he says rotten shit about me. I'm blabbermouth or whatever, but... <laughs> oh, my God. So what are you going to do? <laughs> blabbermouth. Um, I know. You know, I like blabbermouth. I do. But yeah. as the years go on, I realize that what they really like to do... Is start fights yeah. with music. That's what they love. Well, that draws they people that. in, yeah, so but they it, can but, sell advertising. Well, but it's not what music's about. I know you got. <laughs> it's not about you don't have to tell fighting. me. Like, yeah. <laughs> you didn't hear Jimi Hendrix fucking whoop Derek Clapton's ass the other day. When did you fucking hear that shit? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> but uh, one of my favorite, because like I mean they've had me in quarrels with musicians but nothing ever topped the headline Bach slams pussy sweet that was the best headline in the history of blabbermouth what? say it again <laughs> Bach, Bach slams, slams pussy, pussy sweet. sweet you're fucking right he does <laughs> every fucking night Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude. I think there's a good headline wow and what was the story about <laughs> I'll leave that up to you. You can go Google that shit. Okay, I'll look at that one. <laughs> I like the blabbermouth, but they only cover like five bands. Yeah, Corey Taylor. Yeah. Uh, Vinnie Vincent once in a while. Vinnie you Vincent. know what I mean? They do the like, Onk Warrior? Yeah, the Onk Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then it's like uh, oh. Lars. They're always riding Lars' ass. Like, yeah. oh, Lars, Lars, Lars. And then they'll get, uh, the, you know. Phil Anselmo. Yep. On oh, always on all him. Yeah. Always on him. And then Sebastian, you know, you know. I've I've been out of the public since that incident, but Yeah. Getting back into the scene now. It's good, man. It's good. It's it was great to see you <laughs> at the uh at the comedy show last week, man. I love coming down there. It's so it's fun, fun to man. have you there, man. It is. Thank you for having me there. In the eighties, were you big on comedy? Were you into like did, yeah, you uh, know what I, I love and dice? What, what, I'm, one of my favorite things ever is SCTV. Okay? Oh, yeah. And I collect all that. Oh, I have all, every episode. Um, that's a very unique humor. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite comedy things in the 80s was Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah. Delirious. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I hadn't seen it in decades when it, they put it out on DVD. Yeah. So I said to my son, I go, you guys got to see this, man. This is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> he put it on. Yeah. And he's like, you know. I, I, he don't get the reference. Norton. Yeah. Hey, he pulled out his yeah. old hum it, hum it, hum it. out of my ass. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get the references. But like words that you can't say. I was about to say one of the things, oh, but yeah. I don't want to say Oh, yeah, it. yeah, like, yeah, of course. Words it's a different that you can't, time. Yes. It's a different, different time. time, man. So I put it in for one second for my kids, oh, and then I fuck. like fly up and press stop. I go, what the fuck? What were we watching back then? Fuck, I know. That's well, a hardcore. That's a, yeah, it's a, such a different era. Do you have a hard time dealing with the era now, the PC era? Do you think, uh, is, it, is it strange on you? Well, the internet's not PC. Right, you're right there. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, they have this whole thing on Blabbermouth with the comment section, right, which is pure okay. fucking misery. Oh, God. So sometimes, you know, I'll go in there and I'll, I'll just turn it into a shit show. Under a secret name? No, under my name. Under with your a name. check mark and everything. Really? Like, meet me at fucking Chick-fil-A at fucking 2.30 p.m. Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> no shit? <laughs> well, I'm just like, here's, yeah. here's the medium. Yeah. What do you do with this? Yeah. You could just read this shit. How's about I fucking respond to this shit? Wow. Like, I don't do that too much. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> I love you. You're so outlawed. You've always been outlawed. Well, always. Never more than now. <laughs> never more. No way, dude. I mean, in the 80s, the shit was... I'm going through is very hard to 
to deal with, but uh, there was no one more fucking outlaw than you, man. It was always in trouble, but that's what a great front man was, right? Well, we, I was raised to think that you know rock stars can do what they want. Uh, one of my friends now is Fred Durst. Yeah. From yeah, Blue I know Biscuit. Fred quite well. And he's a great guy. Yeah, and I did a movie he, with him. You did? Yeah, yeah. He did. Uh, he he directed the long shots with Ice Cube mm-hmm. and uh, threw me in the movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, an old friend of mine. But go he ahead. He is. Uh, he's got jazz night at, yeah. at his. Uh, yeah, he just club, invited me. How which is, is great. I went there. It was really good. Yeah. But um, he had that whole incident where he did Woodstock. Yeah. And and you know. They burned the place down, ripped it apart. And I remember watching that on MTV. You're talking about being an outlaw. All I fucking saw was a band coming on stage, kicking as much ass as they could. Yeah. That's what we always did. And, like, they did it so hard that it was fucking mayhem. Yeah. But I don't think that's the band's fault. I mean, if people respond in a way... Or if some people you say, "Oh, I'm an outlaw," or Axel is an outlaw. Absolutely. I don't think I don't. I think it's more of the public's perception a lot of the time because, you know, Fred Durst could not be yeah. more of a mellow, cool dude. He's not out for no trouble, you know. But the public wanted some trouble that night. Yeah. And I've been in s- situations where this crowd is just mental. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to control, and you can make that go. Anyway, like a reality show. Like Absolutely. if you want to whip them up or, you know, I mean You really can. Yeah. You really can because mm-hmm. when the band when the when the band is on fire and they're at a point in their career huge and the crowd is there and they want to get rid of some uh angst and rage, you can turn that on. Yeah. You know? Or you can and that's you, what the industry is now is live. Like Yeah. That's what it is. It's We're only, always touring. It's only there's no record yeah, sales anymore, not. so yeah. You know, I, I really think that radio has a lot to do with that because they don't, like, it's all play the same shit all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, when Skid Row started, it was like you put a record out, a new record, they play the new record, you do interviews about it, you go on tour about, you know. Yep. But people still love new records. They, they see the videos on YouTube. Um, and they get millions of plays, so yeah. it still gets out there. It does get it's out there. It's a different way. It is a different way, and it's it's. Nice. But that that's how rock and roll was when we were young. It was only the the you know a certain few four five six people at your school liked it. Yes, you grab around the locker. You, you had a yeah. patch on your jacket. You were a freak. You were a weirdo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and then you'd go to a metal show. I yeah. remember going to see Judas Priest at Halford. Had this fucking quality where he would, I don't know what it was, but he'd make, I would feel like we're all like in this together. We're all priest fans. We're all, we're all metal heads. Yeah. We're all friends. We're all buddies. Like, I don't remember fights at those shows. No, everybody, everybody was on like, everybody's side. Yes. Yeah. That shit was, it was like, like us against the world. Like Lizzie Borden. Like, yeah, yeah. Give him the axe. <laughs> Yeah, me against the world. <laughs> Fuck. What about fucking Rob, man? Rob Halford could He's be amazing. the all-time best, right? Well, you know, I'm I'm collecting a lot of these vinyl records. Yeah. Judas Priest is hard to find. First yeah. pressings. It is hard. And I, cause I'm always looking. I always go to the priest section, and I go, why? Why is there never any old Priest records? And they go, we think because, you know, Priest was like a party band. People yeah. were like rolling joints. Trash the shit. On British Steel and hacking them up. I go, you always got Rush. And the guy goes, well, Rush fans were like meticulous. They're nerds. Like they kept those fucking albums. Yeah, they're nerds. Priest, well, you brought those records to parties. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like hell bent for leather and, you know. I go point entry. That makes sense, actually. I saw Priest on the point entry tour. Man. They opened with Solar Angels. Love that song. Fucking. Love that song. Big fucking, like a helicopter looking lighting mm. rig. They oh came down, they come out. Rob's still in that leather and denim look, you know? Yes. And I never forgot it, you know? Yeah. And then Screaming for Vengeance is the biggest punch in the face of metal Ooh. of all time, man. The production on Oh, that. right? Like riding, riding on the wind. Riding on the wind. 
Who's and there's pipes. Oh. Oh, that stars. Cruise the speed of the light. Fight it. Got on Mars. Body burning bright. Get the riding. Riding on the wind. Oh, my God. Nice. And then when he does the long one, riding, riding on, on the wind. God damn, that is a record, man. That is a fucking record. You know, MTV, they caught lightning in the bottle twice. One was the GNR Ritz, live at the Ritz, and the other one is uh, uh, Priest Houston screaming for vengeance to Yes, that Fuck. is a great one. That's out on DVD now. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's good, man. Halford. And they got a new record coming out. Unbelievable. There's uh, their last record, Redeemer of Souls. Yeah, I saw that tour. Well, there's some fucking great songs on that. Yeah, Rob really? is Rob is just a fucking warrior, man. <laughs> I mean, that guy. And then I miss K.K. Downing, though, boy. Was that guy that cool? That guy, Richie Falk. He's great. Yeah. Oh, no, he's he great. He's a great job. I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying, boy, K.K. Downing, man. When you watch, rules. I saw him at the Us Festival, you oh know? Oh, my, you went to that? Yeah, I went to that. I want to interview you about that. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, this is a three-day weekend, and nothing reminds me more of rock and roll than uh, the Us Festival. Do you know? I bet you don't know this. There's a website called History, historicarchives.com or something that has the full press conference. Oh, shit. With Joe Walsh, Waylon Jennings, and David Lee Ross wow. for like an hour. No shit. I watched it on my fucking TV like three nights ago. Wow. You got to watch that. I got to watch that. It's historicfilms.com or something. And they just got it on there. It's David. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like, the, it's at the Beverly Hilton and they're sitting there. And wow. Joe Walsh. Yeah, because they had the country day. It was the fourth day. A lot of people don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because you had the, like Jenny's the punk right. day was the clash headline. Then the metal day was Van Halen. Then right. you had the new wave day with Bowie. Yeah. And then they had a country day. That was the next weekend, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Waylon Jennings and Joe Walsh and David Lee together. That is sick. Funny, really funny. Yeah, you, uh, you got this amazing Eagles. That's from the long run. Yeah. Which I think is one of the great records that the Eagles did. A lot of people, uh, they downplay the long run. Well, Live in the Fast Lane. You know, that's Come on. on. That's on, on Hotel California. Long run. Uh, are you? Yeah. I don't, Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. He, you're talking to an Eagles fucking master, dude. <laughs> is your shit in alphabetical order? You better believe it. It is. Wow. Oh, look, I just saw Appetite. <laughs> yeah, I got two Appetites, original cover, and then one uh, other cover. Here, there it is, dude. Life in the fast lane, brother. That right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, oh, yeah, but you know what? Isn't there one? Uh, the long run has uh, shoe. You know that one? Doo doo, doo doo. Oh yeah. Doo doo. Bam bam bam. What you gonna do tonight, now, mama? Uh, That's the record right there, man. In it's the city. yeah, in the city from the Warriors. Remember? Incredible. Oh my God, Sab's got a fucking great selection of uh, vinyl over here. In the city. In the Incredible. city. It's so great on there. I can't tell you why. Oh, yeah, of course. The bass player sang that one. Right. Fucking so Can good. Play that? Like yeah, yeah, put it on. Yeah, yeah. He's throwing on uh, Eagle's Long Run right now, which is just a classic. I'll describe Sebastian's house while he's changing the record. Yeah. He, okay, he's got a lot of... Uh, are these uh, Neil Zauzar? Neil Zauzar. Neil Zauzar. He's got the incredible... Incredible Van Halen photos frame. The one with the studio with the beer cans and everything. And Dave's just sitting there with the uh, overalls. And then he's got an, an insane Jimmy Page from the uh, L.A. Forum. But in his kitchen, he has the Slave to the Grind fucking painting. Uh, the original one his father did. 
It's the cover, and it's the size of a goddamn fucking... It was hard to get it in there. I mean, how big is we that had, thing? We, it's uh, 17 feet long and 9 it's, feet high. It's incredible. We had to get pulleys and shit and ropes like on the staircase really? to fucking raise it in and then jam it through the doorway. And oh. like, it, it, there was, we had to like turn... Take the frame off, turn it diagonal to get it in the door. Wow. It was nuts. We now, almost didn't get it in here. Now, you had your, your your dad paint that, and then later you're going, hey, I got the cover for Slave to Grind, or did he paint it, and while he's painting, he go, hey, this could be the cover. How did that happen? Well, I just had the wall space, if you want to know the truth. No, I'm saying, how did it become <laughs> the cover of your fucking uh, Slave oh, to the Grind? Oh, well, we gave uh, the guys in Skid Row were cool enough to... Uh, like my dad's always been an artist and, yeah. and I said why don't we let him do the cover and they were very they were like yeah and that was very very cool of them and uh, so Rachel and Snake sent him the lyrics and that was what he came up with like through reading like Monkey Business wow. lyrics and Slave of the Grind so, that's amazing yeah that was a great memory of the band a lot of people fucking uh, love Slave to the Grind more than the first record. You know, they wow. call that the, the classic and stuff, you know, because it really was so heavier and different, mm -hmm. you know, out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, when you listen to Slave to the Grind, it's fucking molten. It's up there like <laughs> Free Wheel Burning. Remember when Priest came out with Free Wheel Burning? You were like, holy shit, how <laughs> fast is this? I mean, pre that, it's except with like Fast as a Shark, right. you know, with the double that bass. Is, that is that fast. is fast, right. But Slave to the Grind, with the the amazing thing about it is it's super molten, but it's rock and roll at the same time. You know what I mean? Because you're coming on. It's not like I don't, I, singing like that hurts my, my yeah. throat, but it's so good. <laughs> Thank you, dude. It's been a long time. You know, my dream someday is for us to have some sort of communication where we could do 180 gram vinyl version of that record with outtakes and you know, unreleased concert footage and blah, blah, blah. Is there any extra songs from any yeah, of the records? Yeah, there, there's really? still, I have some tapes in this house. Wow. Some, like, big tapes of songs that never came out. And Wow, how many songs? That, not, like, not a lot, but there's but, a couple. Yeah, there's that's a fucking couple. a lot. That's gold, though, in this reissue What's world. What's really gold is I found the... F we did two versions of the Quicksand Jesus video, one with this artist from New York. Right. And it was so out there and different that the management and the band all hated it. I didn't really necessarily hate it, but everybody else hated it. <laughs> and what was it? Just like no band members, just a full art piece? It was a, I can't remember the artist's name, but it, it involved us with like projections of stuff on our face or whatever. Right. I, I haven't seen it since 91, but I found it. Wow. That's ne no fan has ever seen this. And I found the video because when everybody hated it, they took it out of the VHS. We were in like, Florida and everybody was miserable, crying, trash in the room. Yeah. I just took the video and I fucking <laughs> took it. <laughs> Nobody wanted it. Yeah, yeah. Like, that sucks. Wow. And I found it like two days ago in my garage. No fucking shit. But I brought it inside. It's okay. It didn't melt. Yeah. It didn't, it's okay. You, That's you, gold. You, That's gold. Yeah. I could post that on the internet. Yeah, but you don't want it because no. you want to save that for any kind of reissue. But I, would, I hope they call me soon. Like, yeah. gee, what the fuck? It's this just sitting stupid. in a box. This is stupid. Like, put to, it the fuck out. I mean, this is stupid not out. to be back together, right? Put a steak and you scream out on a Blu-ray. Yeah. Roadkill. Right? Make a Blu-ray of that shit. Why aren't they doing it that? No idea. Because, I mean, that guy, he's got to... There's he, not even a DVD of that stuff. They got to need some money pretty soon, right? <sighs> I don't. I can't speak for them guys, but um, it's just... Uh, I don't know. It's funny that we have the chance to do something. So, you know, cool. Yeah. They were just saying, no thanks. <laughs> wow. That's I don't crazy. know if you know them. You can talk to them about that. Yeah, yeah. What, let me ask you this. When you go in and do the, the first record and the second record, how quick do you track these records vocal-wise? Do you just go in? Are you just one, two, taken and fucking blazing on? No, no. No? I, 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 I do what most singers do, which is sing it five, six times and then comp it yeah that's what people do. but on the first two records you were doing yeah, that yeah. right and that's where i learned to do it like double my voice yeah like when you double your voice it gives you uh, this quality that that's really like a money 
sound if you can do it exact like yeah. Ozzy Osbourne maybe some fans don't know that pretty much all that you hear of Ozzy is doubled oh yeah vocals and it sounds fucking great sounds oh, great but sounds a lot evil. of my stuff is too like the song Sweet Little Sister that's all doubled yeah so blah, 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 I'm a reggae machine and it sounds huge yeah, yeah. that's fucking cool. I did one album called Frame Shift which is this progressive metal record and he he this guy that produced it had a tr triple track every vocal one in the middle and one on each side wow <laughs> like, wow that's some stoner that's a shit bit there. much though yeah yeah you know I, I, my next record I don't want to have a, much doubling at all like I want to go back to the roots of music like with acoustic bass songs you know yeah. adding shit onto them but um one of the songs that for me has lasted the test of time in my career is called battle with the bottle which is a song i wrote with john rich oh wow big and rich yes. for the cmt thing yes right right like we do that, that was cool we right? do that now wow in the set because as i get older the volume oh yeah is gets too much for me. I I I, I agree with you. I don't enjoy it, it. I don't either, man. And I don't want to damage my ears. I know, man. My my right ear is gone. <sighs> Your you know? what? My right ear. And it, that's no. I don't want to live with yeah. with bad hearing. And, yeah. And I love rock and roll, and I always will. But if I'm doing fifty cities, yeah, I've got to watch out for my fucking ears. You know, my voice, everything. I have to. That's a lot of. Yeah, music. Yeah, look at Brian Johnson. You like know? the first thing about when, when we get a, when we get in the in a cab to the gig, they all everybody wants to play music. I go turn that fucking shit off. I gotta go on stage a second, yeah. like yeah. and blast my brains out for all night. You go in air monitors? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, only right. It's so great. Well, there's a thing called uh, Rev Thirty Three. This device, yeah. that um that cleans up your signal, so it it, it it's. Uh, you don't have ear fatigue oh, at the no end of the shit? night. Yeah, uh, oh. I can show it to you. Oh my god! And it's a hundred bucks or something. It's it it cleans up your signal, so when you take them off, your ears aren't you know. That's incredible. Yeah, it's really you need one if you if you use that all. The Absolutely. Time. You man. use that on stage? No, but when I sang for years, oh, yeah. uh, I sang until inner mounter just came out. Yeah. I was like, God, I wish I had them now because oh, yeah. sometimes. I'll sing out of tune and flat because like something will be so fucking loud yeah, I can't even. Can't hear it, uh, yeah, one time I I sang with bass uh, guitar does that for me. Bass guitar and does I, it to I, me too. It and also weird. if I'm on a stage at a club where the subs yep. are right underneath I'm me, I'm over. It's like a battle. Yeah, it's like the whole show. I'm telling the farmhouse house guy, you, if you turn it up too much, I fucking can't hear the, yeah. what it is. Yeah, I can't. And either. then he's like, well, if I don't turn it up enough, it sounds wimpy. Yeah. So it's like this fucking fight. I'm the same way because you start going like, what, what note the is fuck? that? Yeah, because... you're like you're on there like generals gathered in a oh, and you go, no, I'm no. killing it. And then you hear <laughs> it and you go, whoa, I'm not even close. I don't know how that happened. That happened Welcome to, last to YouTube. Year. Right, I know, right? They just throw it up, sing it flat Yeah, just go for it. Put it up there. Yeah. Fuck, man. <laughs> that is crazy. When you look at uh, the Skid Row stuff, what... what What's your favorite song, man? Holy fuck, I'm not even close. It's true, dude. It's true. <laughs> dude, I've been there. I remember. That's why I got I'll there. tell you what, like 20 years ago, I did this. Uh, uh, Zach Wilde had a band, Leonard Skinhead. And they did, <laughs> They went out and did uh, like covers, you know, of Eagles and Allman Brothers and stuff, pre-Pride and Glory. Wow. And uh, my band opened. I booked the tour. It was oh, just a wow. little mini tour. And one night... Uh, I said, hey, I want to come out and do War Pigs with you guys. And he goes, yeah. And I stepped on stage, and he hits it. You know, I was like, holy shit, this guy's on a hundred. I mean, so yeah. loud. Yeah. And I mean, I, I was just singing shit the whole time. I had my worst ever gig was uh, Rock and Rio, actually. Um, after we put out the Kicking and Screaming record, yeah, uh, the tuning of the song kicking and screaming yeah is fucked up it's like this weird tuning that's not a normal tuning for a guitar it's not 440 so i go i'm gonna save money on guitar techs i'm gonna get a brazilian dude down there there's got to be a ton of them so we hire a guy that can't speak english oh shit but i'm i'm like well, how hard can it be you know yeah here's the fucking songs tune them yeah slate slate of the grind is the first song fine no problem 
Kicking and Screaming second song. I got a guy named Devin on guitar. The Brazilian guy hands them the tune guitar, but it's completely in the other tuning of it's not in uh, the yeah. kicking and screaming tuning. Yeah. But we blazed through the whole fucking song. Yeah. And I I it was the worst. <laughs> like I shouldn't even be saying that. Yeah. But it was in the wrong tune. So I'm going, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. The guitar player's going, we're all killing it. And then it was like, oh no. It was broadcast on TV. Oh man. Like, but it's you hard know, people to... go I you can't control it. The yeah. only way you can control that is to go to tapes. Yeah. So if y'all out there want it perfect, yeah. we can fucking get up there like a lot of bands and just press play. But if you want the real deal, sometimes... You're going to get it. Sometimes you're going <laughs> to... Warts and all. That's what's great, though. Because you go like, man, remember yeah. we saw... He was at, at the Rock and Rio. He sang completely no, the wrong key. I don't key. like that. I, I don't know. like that. But it's a memory, I don't though. like that. It's not a good memory. <laughs> What are you going to do? I love it, dude. But I, I went up with uh, Motorhead one time in Norway, and yeah. I had no clue what song it was. It was so loud. Yeah. He goes, come on up and sing. And I get up there. It's like... <laughs> and I look at me, what fucking song is this? Yeah, yeah right? It was nuts. It is crazy. Yeah. People don't understand. When you get on there, you're like, it's like a jet engine yes. next to you. <laughs> Some of these guys play. And the drums are crazy. Oh, that snare? Like, just snare take kill your you. fucking head off. Oh, my Symbols? God. Yeah, we're old now. <laughs> well, it, but this is really true. Like, it is true, though. You got to talk about this when you got a guy like Brian Johnson yeah. who can't be in ACDC because his ears are fucked. Yep. I mean, you know, I bet you he wishes he had in ears. I know, man. And, I, I, and well, another thing that happens to me, too, is allergies. Season yeah. will come, and my and right you get all clogged all up. In her ear, oh my and then God, I don't know I what key I'm in. Too. Yeah, I you're like, what? I, I can't fucking hear the guitar right, you know. I went skiing at Mammoth Mountain. Yeah, and you know, I'm thinking about skiing, but it, I got altitude sickness oh, because fuck. I didn't acclimate. Yeah. To that elevation. Um, and I didn't realize that Mammoth was like fucking the mountains. Way the fuck up there. Yeah. <laughs> and I skied as hard as you can fucking ski. Yeah. By the end of the day, I was puking. Wow. Like projectile vomit. Yeah. My ears were fucked. And they go, you got altitude sickness. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Uh, it's crazy. They get it all the time out there in God. Denver, man. My really? high, you know? Yeah, I'm like, up on the top of the mountain, and, and you know, I get down, I'm, I'm puking. Yeah. It's weird. I got, you know, <laughs> it's, it, you are the only guy, really, that had communication with Axel all during that time, right? Or, yes, that's true. That's, that's pretty interesting, right? Well, I didn't hear from him until, like, uh, I don't know. 2006, I think. 2006. Okay, so, so there was so like 13 th years where I didn't hear from him. You didn't hear from him either. And, and, and you get a call one day and you're like, whoa. It was a text. A text. And, um, and it said, hey, it's Axel. I go, who's, my, who's this fucking, which one of my friends is being an idiot? Yeah, of course. But That's... then I looked at the info. It said 310 area code. I go, holy fuck. So I just pressed it. Yeah. Call. Yeah. Like, hello. And I go, oh my God, it's you, man. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy. That had. And he goes, he starts laughing, ha 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 ha. And I go, wow. He goes, I figured it, it had been a long enough time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But I understand that, you know, disappearing sometimes. Yeah. I see an interesting thing happening now on the internet where the biggest of the big rock stars are not on there anymore. Yep. Yeah. They're like, fuck this. Yeah. And the guys that sell out stadiums are not posting what they had for breakfast. And yeah. That shit's like kind of going out the door because it's kind of like. You need mystique. Yes. Right? You can't be on there just constantly. I think if you have mystique, it'll drive butts into the seats. It's too. true. Because people are, if What's they going on with if they guy? have you all yeah. the time, they're, they're like, like, I don't need to go to the concert. I'll just watch it on Periscope, exactly. right? Yes, it's totally so true. true. Yeah, it's crazy. It's getting more like that. Yeah, and also I see a new thing too. And, and you know, I I've I've said this about Axel. He's like, you know, top three to me of all time. Mm -hmm. But I've said this: the wisest move he did was disappearing all that time as the mm -hmm. AKA Howard Hughes of rock. But that was the wisest thing to do because, you know, when you look at the the era of music 
it had gone another way and people were just kind of like you know, if he just would have kept putting out records with the same he guys. He skipped it all. Yeah, it would have he been skipped, just over. Yeah, he skipped yeah. all of it. Yeah. Because even when you guys do your third record, mm-hmm. Doc McGee's like, disappear for a while. Grunge is huge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sparta, yeah. Actually, we went on tour through all that, which was silly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a great tour. Yeah. But that's in the book as well. I'm not trying to hype the book. But if you, <laughs> no. you want to learn about that shit, that's yeah. all in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny. I was with Eddie Trunk the day your your book came out, and uh, and I was on the air with him for like two hours. He's all he didn't mention me. Oh my god! I can't believe well, it. Well, did you know the whole he story? Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he didn't put me in his. That's what he said when I saw him last essential week. Essential books. Yeah. <laughs> Skid Row. You got him back. I was like, what the fuck? I ran to the store. Yeah. Eddie Trunk's top essential records of all time. I'm not fucking in there. It's fun. It's not too fun when you're not essential. <laughs> <laughs> he will be in the paper box. There you go. You're putting it in. That's a great night, though, there. right? You bring Axel say, down I to the station. I, I got to say, though, th- this, this is something I haven't said yet in an interview, is that one of the most unexpected, strange to me reactions that I got from the book, a lot of people uh, contacted me via email or like Eddie, a lot of people, not just Eddie, some people were like like pissed that they weren't in my book more. Wow, that's weird. Like one singer who's like one of my heroes yeah, sent me this email. And I'm like, you know, like, okay, let me address this. I didn't sit down for four years with a list of people that I'm going to write about and then a list of people that I'm not. All I tried to do was make something that you would want to read from page one to page 450, okay? Yeah. And I, I, it's not like you, like, oh, I got to put this guy in here because it's like, this is the fucking story. If you're not in it, it's not a, it's, like, yeah. I don't read Duff McKagan's book and go, I'm not in it. This isn't very good. That's <laughs> weird. That's weird that people I would don't be like, the shit in, I, hey, let's like, see if I'm I in read, his book. I'm like, read a book because it's a, a book. Yeah. And I, what I want to know is this interesting to read. Like, I don't, I've known Duff for a million years. I'm not in his book. I don't say, this book could be a lot better if I was in it more. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the it, fuck is that? That's pretty wild, I mean, right? Like, I can tell, I don't want to go in it, but it's very strange. I'm like, Weird. Like, <laughs> what was that band you did with Jim, uh, Jimmy Chamberlain and those guys? You did that record. That was called what? The Last Hard Men. What was that? Who was in it? First of all, it was Jimmy Chamberlain on drums. Kelly Deal from the Breeders. Unbelievable. Yeah. Jimmy Flemian from the Frogs. And what was that? It wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> but how did that come together? That was an interesting experiment to see if the worlds of rock and alternative could come together as one and the answer is no they cannot <laughs> <laughs> who put that together i don't know some unwise per- no I'm, I'm being silly uh kelly deal from the breeders okay. called me out of nowhere yeah i said i'd like to do some music with you i go why <laughs> she yeah. goes because you're like a fucking punk you don't you don't give a shit yeah i go okay i don't know okay <laughs> that's wild it was weird there's a couple of good tunes on there. It never came out, right? Yeah, no, it came oh, out. Oh, it did come out? Years later. Oh, I got you. Cause I, I... Not a big release. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not one of my favorite ones that I've done. <laughs> yeah, man. There are some interesting moments on there. What was it like singing on Broadway, dude? That's pretty wild, right? Um, I did four Broadway shows, and, and um, there was talk of me doing some other ones. It didn't happen for a couple of reasons, but... I just love to sing, and I, I I started in the church choir when I was a little boy, and uh, that's what Broadway reminded me of in a lot of ways. Yeah, it was like back, like even some of the songs that I sang were some of the songs that I sang in, in the church choir. Like uh, "Land of Hope and Glory" was the song that Doctor Jekyll got married to. Right. And I used to sing that when I was a kid. So it was I was on stage on Broadway doing like the same shit. But yeah. I did when I was like eight or nine. Wow. So. And how many shows a week? Like. Uh, Dr. Jekyll was six a week. Jesus Christ was eight a week. Wow. And I didn't think it was possible to do eight shows a week. 
So I told the producers of Jesus Christ Superstar, I can only do six. Yeah. And they go, Sebastian, here's what we'll pay you if you do six a week. La, 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 la. Yeah. And then they go, here's what we'll pay you if you do eight. And I went, <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, the pipes are fucking feeling amazing. I think... I'm just feeling so up to this. <laughs> That's and I discovered that I could. Wow. I honestly thought, there's no way. I can't do that. Right. Let's get into that. When you're a kid, <laughs> you uh, you hear Kiss, of course. You, you see the poster on the boardwalk. You're, you're hooked. What is Kiss? And then you start, do you buy a Kiss record right away? Or how do you start the getting into rock my, and roll? My dad gave, at Christmas, gave me Kiss Alive. And Ted Nugent, Weekend Warriors. A great one. At the same time. Wow. For Christmas. <laughs> and um, the imagery of both those records. I love Ted on the cover with the gun as yeah, a The shotgun, yeah. That was dope. also the pinball machine, yeah, remember? I love that. Me too. That is great. Fucking great. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, that, Alive was the first one I got. And that makes you want to be a singer? Cause when no, I... no, 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 no. Like, I was a kid. I was like eight or something. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think people could be rock stars. Yeah. Started in the church choir. Gotcha. My buddy Dixon Davidson rode up to me on his bicycle. I was on my bike. I was eight. He goes, hey, man, you want to sing in the church choir? If you do, you can get paid $3 a month, and if... I get you, I get an extra dollar. We were like eight, it's like 1976. Yeah. And I go, I go, somebody's going to pay me to sing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So I fucking peeled down there. Yeah. Got in, got in the choir. Were you a church guy? Were you a family? No. 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 We were, I was into getting paid to sing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... I ha it was like I had to be there every Tuesday, every Thursday at like 5 p.m. or 6 to, to rehearse for a couple hours. I had to be in my Cossack and my gown and my shoes and my, my, the right socks and everything and ride my bike down Sunday morning like 7 or 8 a.m. to yeah. be there and sing from like 9 a.m. To, to, you know, 1 p.m. on yeah. Sunday. So I was really doing it, you know, like in... As much, the reason I say this is because it's it's hard for me to find choirs for my kids. Yeah, like that. I, when I lived in Jersey, I was trying to find choirs for my kids like that, and I would call church. And they go, "We don't have a choir." Like, yeah. they go, "We do, we do that like at Christmas <coughs> only." Yeah, but is that weird? Like, <laughs> when you were a kid, did they have choirs? No, maybe that's a Canadian thing. I think the people, like some people, would sing like a couple. You know, I only went to church like four times and made my skin crawl. Yeah, you know, like my mom <laughs> would go on vacation and I, uh, people babysitting me would go, "Well, we go to church." I'd be like, "No, well, <laughs> I, my family doesn't for sure." So I'll stay for home sure. and watch cartoons. And they're like, "You can't stay home all your own." I go, "I always do when my mom's at work. I'm an only child, divorced. I can handle it." And I'd be in church going crazy. Nuts. I'd yeah. go crazy. It was so scary and it weird. It was kind of scary. Yeah, and I and oh, I remember this blue bus would pick us up, this big blue bus, and they would sing on there, you know. Michael Row, the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Michael Row, the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Holy fuck, I'm not even close. <laughs> God, that's so real. It's so real, dude. Right? Yeah. It's I mean, tough being a singer, man, because... It is tough because it's kind of like a form of magic. Yeah. You have to make this sound come out of your mouth. And your body has to be yeah. on all the time. Like, if you, you know, the AC was on or you, you talked all night or you did here's, coke here, or anything. Here's what's even crazier. Yeah. Guy like you or me, we're in our 40s, right? Yeah. You go on tour, like in Europe or something, you go into a venue that's no air conditioning. Yeah. That's 100 motherfucking degrees, and you're under the lights, and you're supposed to go up there yeah. and sing. And rock out. Like, like the record. You can't even fucking breathe. You can't. There's no air. None. There's, you don't even want to be in that room. It's like doing a gig in a sauna. Yeah. Like, here's me. If you see me doing a show in a sauna, 
Yep, it's well, exactly I mean, it's right. Not, I don't do the record in a sauna. No. I do it in a fucking amazing studio. Fucking blazing Trans- hot in those places. I remember seeing uh, Black Keys in 04. Like, I went to the corner of London to see this band, right? And, and I go in. It's misery. Some place I think it was called The Garage. Yeah, and I go, about oh, right. there's no fucking codes in here <laughs> at all. Wanna- Dudes are just crammed in, <laughs> drinking warm beer, spilling it everywhere. It's a thousand degrees. Yeah, I go, and it's this is horrible. How do you, how yeah. do you perform like, like? Yeah, it's and like, guitars are all out of tune because it's too hot. And you don't want to even be the fuck. I there. know. Like, yeah, it's so not rock. <laughs> and there's no toilet, like stuff like that. Yeah. You go to a gig, okay, me. I go, I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay, well, you gotta walk through the crowd to get to the bathroom. I go, well, I'm, then I'm not going to the bathroom. Yeah. So, but most people. Can go to the fucking bathroom. Yep. Yeah. I once went to the bathroom. Guys were taking pictures of me taking a piss, <laughs> and I go, "Give me your motherfucking camera. Gonna smash that." Mo-. And I did. And then, and then the security's like, "Well, you I go, the motherfuckers taking pictures of me peeing. Yeah, arrest. Them. I don't want that. Arrest them. Fuck him. Yeah. And fuck his camera. <laughs> smash. Smash. I don't care. You're so gangster, dude. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I can't even believe it, man. Like, you've been to a gig like that, right? Absolutely. What, you, is that the entrance you want to make to your fans? <laughs> hey, this is me taking a shit. <laughs> How's it going? Get a picture of this. Fuck. There's my hero. He's going to the bathroom. Yeah. Fuck that. that. This is amazing. I didn't want to see Gene Simmons taking a no. shit, right? <laughs> then you're in the bathroom with the fans. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up, dude? Yeah. Well, what's up is I'm 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 going to the bathroom. What's up with you, <laughs> Presley? It's Dean Del Rey. What's going on, dude? How's it going, man? man? You know who you look like? You look like Damone from Fast Times. Whoa! Whoa! That, that movie, Fast Times original. I can't high. believe it. He's Sean a good. Penn. He's a good friend of mine. It's about weed. Yeah, Bob Romanus, you look like him. Yeah, you kind of look like him. Yeah, don't get about- a haircut either. Yeah, you should have. Is that your long son? Hair. Yes, that's my son. Wow. How old are you? He's 40. 16? <laughs> you play music? No. Good He's wise man. He's in commercials. Man. Wise man. He's in commercials. Awesome. That's your son? Yes. 16? You're taking me out to dinner. <laughs> yeah, the, the son's paying for sushi. That's right. Commercial money. Later, dude. Good to Thanks, meet you. Buddy. That's wild, man. I didn't even know you had kids until I, I Wikipedia have, I have five kids. Five well, kids? <laughs> Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Five kids. Yeah. You, let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about some party in here. Okay. It was pretty fierce. If you want to talk about party, you can read my book. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> No, there's a lot of partying in the book. Yeah, yeah, I get it. There is. But it was uh like did blow fuck with your voice at all? Because it would it would ruin my You know, it it, it it did and then sometimes it wouldn't. Right. <laughs> Which would be the weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the same as sex. Yeah. Sometimes I didn't even want to think about oh, sex. Oh, yeah, right. On coke. coke. You're right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be thinking about it. Then sometimes yeah. I would get King Kong Dong Whoa. for fucking, like, just like a, right. like a madman, like, wow. sweating and fucking and sweating. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't yeah, know yeah. if you've had that experience. <laughs> if it I, was either, if, all, it was either, it's like extreme. Yeah. If I know? even did. Uh, uh, like I did a lot of blow, lots, gallons. Not, <laughs> probably not Sebastian Bach, but no. but up there, oh, yeah. rolling with blow dealers to the gigs. Well, that's the comedian scene, right? right? No, rock and roll. Oh, I'm okay. Talking. Rock yeah. well, and roll. I've rock only been doing scene. comedy seven years. Oh, okay. I played music twenty five. Oh my god. Yeah, but if I just whiffed a key shot of blow. Dick dead for the no, okay. For, no, most of always the time. with me. Always, always okay. gone. Because I had a couple times where it went the other a couple way. times. But imagine now blow. <laughs> then you just take some Viagra. But I don't a, like blow at all. I hate it. it was, it's an awful, awful drug. It man. is. It's yeah. so bad. And I say that in my book all the time because I tell stories. But you know, there's nobody doing that shit. That's cool. Yeah. At our age. Yeah. You're right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's and again, to think of all the rock stars that we've lost, Shh. especially in the grunge world, yep. which isn't really our world, but all these dudes. Yep. You know. The three main guys are gone. Lane, Cobain, and Cornell. And I would put in Shannon Hoon in there. Absolutely. Who did Shannon Hoon was lines and yeah. died from that. I tell you what. Scott Weiland. Yeah. You forgot about two, like, major dudes. Well, well, Blind Melon, 
Yeah, yeah. they didn't really hit like the other guys. Well, but still. No, Blind Melon. I'll tell you what. No, I like that. One band. of my favorite bands ever. You know one of their the last record? videos? Yeah. yeah, where he had the short hair. Unbelievable. What is that weird video? Mad something or? Dude, oh fucking that that record is great. Yeah. And when you listen to it now, you go, hey, this guy was way ahead of his time, yeah. man. Dude, our podcast usually this long. I go hours, dude. That's cool, I like it. Oh yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know I'm why wrong. I like it? I I look at it as like <laughs> we're only here on this earth once, mm-hmm. and I look at the podcast as like later on down the road, people go, look at this fucking long form with Sebastian yeah. Bach. Oh, I'm right into it. Yeah, right. And I like playing music in the back. <laughs> I know. It's like this. This is cool. It's the first Skid Row record. Yeah. I mean, I got this in like a, a Bogota, Colombia, or something. It's a Some com- it's a Colombi- like Colombian version. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you're out on the road, do you find you yes. uh, you look I, for your I, record? Yeah, and then I just send upon the store like a locust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's so many cool little mom and pop. There is uh, record stores still in this country. There's a great one in countries. Denver. I'm going. Black and red. Never been. Oh, you're gonna love it. I've never been. That's the. There's one great one in Portland, Oregon. Oh yeah, what's it called? I'm Cross, going there next week. You are. Yeah. Crossroads Music. Okay. Co- okay. It's one record store, but it has like a bunch of different dealers, so it's like five record stores. Oh, it's like a flea market inside yeah, a store. Yeah. When I first got there. I went to like the K section. I go, well, the, what, there's not that many. He goes, oh no, dude, there's one over there. There's one over there. There's one over there. There's one. Over there. There's one over there. Like, it's like so each dealer has his own little store in there. Wow, that is Come here, crazy. Buddy. Come say hi. Wow. Skid Row, we're playing for you. This look is it. my boy Trace. You got look at he's wearing, he's wearing a fly on the wall, <laughs> ACDC shirt. How cool Trace, is that? Trace, say hello, my father. Hello, my father. Yes. How old is this he? This is Dean. How are you? He's buddy? a comedian. How old are you, buddy? Four. Four. Yeah. You like rock and roll? <laughs> Show me your guitar, dude. <laughs> Sebastian the dad. It's so weird to see Sebastian the dad. Well, hey, you know. Yeah. At least I'm, I'm here. <laughs> uh, oh, hell yeah. I'm so happy that you didn't lose all that stuff in that flood in Jersey. You saved it. Like, yeah, now, the, the, the two-inch masters... Were they in No, the- they weren't in there. Oh, okay. Because no. I read that like the Two Inch Masters of Skid Row's records were in there. But no, that's not true. That, that's a, yeah. No. What, what other music do you listen to besides? I like- listen to a lot of 70s music. Yeah. I love Steely Dan. Oh, I love and it. I love vocals from the 70s. Like, before- like Fleetwood Mac, well, Rumors. More obscure shit like that. Like, there's this singer, Phoebe Snow, Poetry yeah. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, I listen to that all the time. Wow. And there's so many great singers from that era. Like, I've always been a Journey fan. Oh, God. And then I heard Sam Cooke. Oh, yeah. But I didn't know who the fuck Sam... I didn't know nothing about that. Yeah. And then I heard, you know, where Steve Perry kind of learned how to sing. Yeah. So I'm going to go collect all that now. It's like know? Frankie Miller is where Rod Stewart got I all of I've his... I've never heard Frankie. i got to turn you that... on to him. I love that. That's where Rod Stewart got all of his stuff, man. You'll love this guy. <laughs> See, I love all There's that. a million dudes out there like that, right, that we don't know. That's why I find collecting records is so fascinating because... Each one is a snapshot of that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like right now, don't quite give you that really. They don't. Like it's, it's too flat. It's just they kind of everything kind of sounds the same. Yeah. But albums all sound different. They do, and not you only know? that, it's the whole thing, man, of putting it on yeah. and committing to one piece of music, right, right. not popping Paying around. attention. Yeah, no ADD in That's the listening, right. you know? We have uh, vinyl appreciation parties all the time. Yeah. I and gotta the, come the, to that. The rule, well, at different guys' houses. Too. Oh, I got you. Can you. Come. Yeah. I know the vice president of Whole Foods, and he has six thousand records. Whoa. <laughs> six. And, th- but we have a rule: you cannot raise up the stylus until the song is over. That's- because a lot of people. We'd be like, okay, we hear that. I go, no, 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. You're allowed to change it, but not to, you got to let the fucking song play. Yeah, yeah. Because because we as humans have to force ourselves now yeah. to, to think like that. It's true, because it's you're so like, weird. oh, I know this yeah, song. Yeah, I got the next yeah. one. No, listen, listen to it. I mean, as we <laughs> listen to the Skid Row record, the first one here, just think about when you guys were in the studio uh-huh. and you sequenced the record. 
you probably did about three or four different versions yeah. of the sequences, and then you went out to your car, yes. and you drove home from the or studio. Or we lived with it for a yeah. couple days. And you go, I don't like how that's 18 right. Alive goes into Big Gun that's, or what. That's why iTunes, I've got a, a problem with it in that with Shuffle being such a part of that, right? Yeah. And Genius and all this stuff. It's like... <laughs> Sometimes I have to figure out how to play a record in order. Yeah, you're right. Uh, why? Why? Why is it like that? I hate that because like, the because the artist designed that. I hate like that, that, right? Like some some versions of it's like, how do I do this? Yeah, it shouldn't be like that. It's like when they go, it goes from you know free wheel burning into you know like the next tune. You go, oh here it comes, and then you go, oh what happened? It's such a <laughs> bummer, right? You're just like Fun. only old people know that, but that's yeah. true. But sequencing is such an art. Everything about making records back then, the cover, yes. the cover photo, the liner notes, like, whoa, this guy sang backgrounds on that. The artwork, like right now, I've got these sideways, right? Yeah. But then I wanted to get these crates because I love the artwork so much. Yeah, me too. So flipping through it, yeah. I can see the artwork. Yeah. And that's a lost thing. That's that's it really is. Digital music, there's no art. It's just up in the air. <laughs> now you sang on uh Chinese democracy. Yeah. Uh, how's that go down? Did, was it down when they were working at Village Recorders there? No, it was Electric Lady in oh, New York. Oh, New York. So yeah. how's that go? That was fun. So he contacts you. We were really text, close at the And you start yeah. talking, and, and then what? One day he says, I'm recording, come sing? <laughs> yes. And you fly so to New weird. York? It's so weird. No, I lived in Jersey. Oh, at the months. time. Okay. And we were hanging out, and... Um, <laughs> You're hanging out, and, uh, and he's playing you the music. Yeah, Are you tripping out? Yeah, it was out? a song, Sorry. Yeah. And, it, and um, I came in and sang the high harmony and the chorus, and Betta was there, and she's like, oh, you, you really do this? I'm like, yeah. God. It was heavy. It was a great night, and then um, he, uh, then when I did Angel Down, I, I was just joking around. I go, so when are you going to sing on my record? Yeah. And he goes, when? I go, what? He goes, where? I go, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. And, uh, so he came and sang on three songs on my record too. Ooh, so cool! And I'm working very hard. I'm putting my th that record's never been out on vinyl. Wow! And I'm working on getting my solo catalog uh, put on out on vinyl. vinyl. Yeah. You know that Chinese Democracy record. Uh, it took you know, of course, a million years and you know, a million yeah. different players and all that. But there is a crown jewel in there, man, and that is the. Um, I like a lot of those songs. I do too, but better. Yeah, yeah, better. There's yeah. this I love. This I love. There's oh, a yeah. bunch of good tunes on there. Better is the one though, because that tune. sounds like something that would have been on Illusions. Right, and the title track too, Chinese Democracy. Yeah, oh yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It's an interesting, uh, interesting record for sure, man. You know, but it's a weird situation because. The public doesn't give a shit if you ever put out another record. It's yeah. so weird. I think it's because kids keep getting introduced to rock. Yeah. So there's this uh, handful of classic records that if you're getting into rock and roll, yep. you get exposed to these albums, ACDC, Back in Black. Iron Maiden is so huge. Oh, God. You know? Yeah. You big Maiden guy? I love, I love Maiden, man. Number of the I love, Beast. I love Number of the Beast. I love Killers. Yeah. I love Peace of Mind. Yeah. Yeah. Peace of Mind's great. I learned how to sing a lot from that album. Where Eagles Dare. Yeah. Flight of Icarus. That's the old school. Revelation, Mother Earth. Yeah. No, no. No. Yeah. Oh, God of Earth and all about. Oh, yeah. Down and hear our cry. Oh. Our earthly rulers falter. Our people drift and die. <laughs> <laughs> you warm up before you go yes. on? Yeah. How long? 25 minutes. 25? Yeah. You Bel Canto. Like then I take like a half hour and the voice brightens up. What do you do, like lip trills and that stuff? Like no, no, that's a different style. Yeah, that's from uh, Ron Anderson, exactly, and also this girl Katie Agresta uh -huh. out in Long Island. But the guy I always went to, Don Lawrence, doesn't do that. He has a uh, this style called bel canto, and it's more scales. Yeah, like la 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 lee 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 li, la la, like stuff like that. Right, you know, right. It's more like that. But I don't have to like hold my tongue or... Yeah. 
I mastered it where I didn't have to hold my tongue, you know? That's a crazy... You have to warm up your voice slowly. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take it... You know, you got to let the voice kind of be the voice. And I I, uh, do my bel canto, and then after bel canto, I'll put on some Journey, some old Steve Perry, because he sang in this high tenor... Like, if you can do Don't Stop Believing at karaoke, you're yeah. getting laid that night. Yeah. Because people fucking, oh, don't stop believing. Uh, that range, people yeah. love that high singing. Yeah, they But do. only he really sings like that. There's not a lot of other singers that you can find yeah. that sing like that. That Infinity record is, is the What's one. What's on there? You got wheel in the sky, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. lights, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and and up against you know Greg Raleigh. Isn't that evolution? No, Infinity's okay. the first Infinity. one with Steve All Perry. Right. So you got like out of my night and into my day, oh, and that. then Steve comes in on a long summer night. Can you feel <laughs> it? You know, it's like what? The I hell? love that. Right? I love uh, loving you is easy. Oh yeah. Oh. Man, it's great, great that singer. band. Do you know is that he underrated. lives? He lives like right up the street from here. He does. Steve, I know where he lives. Have you ever seen him? No, and I, you know, I go running sometimes. And I've, I've, I, I want to go over there and knock on his door and yeah. like say, "Dude, we need you in we, this world. We do. Like, we need you. We do. Right? I do. I know. <laughs> it's, it's like watching that Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was one of the saddest. Oh things i've ever seen i had to turn it off yeah when he didn't sing with them i, it couldn't, was a, I couldn't watch it, it was a punch to the stomach it's like just sad because it, he's standing right there and he sang a year ago with the uh, eels you know he did like three dates with the eels where he walked on and did like two journey songs and there was that whole thing of like maybe he just can't hit the notes or anymore but it doesn't okay let me address that yep i don't judge a human being on how old they are like when i was a kid my favorites were like david lee roth and shit but then ozzy was out then and he was out of his fucking mind yeah he would go on stage with no shirt on fat as fuck yeah. with a bald head and nobody cared i was like oh ozzy's fat i don't like ozzy. nobody cared. i don't care i nobody. don't care so say some guy who's 70 can't hit the notes that he hit when he was 20. I don't care. Yeah. I I want his soul. I want his life experience. It's not a fucking contest. It's not sports. Yeah. It's not like, oh, you didn't run the sprint. Yeah. And at the same time, you he ran can't it. throw the ball well, 100 yards sh- anymore. Yeah. That means nothing to me. I go see Neil Young at the Hollywood Bowl. Love him. He's got 14 chins. Yeah. He doesn't give a fuck. He's Neil old yep. now. Yep. I don't care. I'll pay $300 to sit in that seat oh, yeah. and fucking get into it. I get into the music. I don't judge somebody on how what age they are. I don't you either. You know, like. I, Cause you know they're gonna die someday, yeah. and then all you got is what they did. That's it. So that's one fucking thing. Like I don't listen to a Rush record or a Neil Young record before I buy it. I just fucking buy it. Yeah. I just buy it. Yeah. And I put it on and I get into it because they've given me enough in life where I respect them. Yeah, they just to deserve them, the yes, purchase. That's right. Just for on that's the right. beach or fucking harvest alone, right. you should buy his yes. whole fucking catalog. Yes, and you should buy mine too out there. People yeah, listening. just for the first three <laughs> Skid Row records. Yeah, you gotta fucking buy some some slack. stuff, right? <laughs> that's right. We're listening to this first record right now, and I just heard Youth Gone Wild. And uh-huh. I, I tell you, man, <laughs> I remember that video. Mm. I remember the tattoo coming up, Youth Gone Wild. There yeah. it is right there. And I remember going... Hey, that motherfucker can <laughs> sing. It was mind-boggling. Wow. You know, the front man <laughs> is really an 80s thing, and it's kind of gone now. Well, you know, Robert Plant and stuff, but the front man is gone, right? I, I got to say that I think that um, the way people record records now has a lot to do with what you're saying because when every voice is pro-tooled and yeah. put through the same fucking program... They're all going to sound somewhat similar. When I put on the radio these days, there's a certain sameness because it's all so perfect. Yeah, you're right. To really get a front man, you can't cover it up with all this perfection and programs and all. You, you got 
Yeah. You got to fucking, like Janis Joplin. <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine taking her vocal track and putting it in Pro Tools and making it? That'd be disgusting. Like, but that's what people do. I know. It They're would so not worried sound, about it would flaws. not sound like Janis Joplin. It would not be any. It wouldn't be special. Janis Joplin wouldn't be signed right now. She wouldn't be signed. They'd be but like, "That's the greatest singer, like one, one of the, the great of all times." <laughs> She wouldn't even be in the game. They'd but be that's like, when you say there's no front man. Yeah. We can't even get to them yeah. through all the layers of shit. Yeah. How do you even get to them? Like, it all sounds the same. Like, I, when I listen to this record, there's no record that sounds like this. It's got its own identity. That was the fucking purpose when we started in rock. Every band, you had to have your own sound. You remember that? Yeah, hell yeah. Because when I started in Skid Row, Bon Jovi was helping us, and he's like, Sebastian... Sometimes you sound like Vince Neil. Sometimes you sound like Dio. Sometimes you sound like uh, Halford. Sometimes you sound like this guy. You got to fucking figure out right now how to sound like Sebastian. Wow. And this album is like... He laid that on you? Yeah, because it then, was true because I was a kid. Yeah. So sometimes I sound like Vince. You can hear that. Same with me. Sometimes right? I was Axel. Yes. Sometimes I was Lane Staley. And, and it was like, dude... Now, yeah. right now, yeah. you've got to fucking figure this out. And how'd you and figure I, it out? I don't just hours of locking myself in a room, singing over and over. And Michael Wagner, the producer, you know, helped me a lot. Yeah, and he produced this, and he would coach me. Would he say stuff like, "Yeah, to Halford, me, to give, Halford, go that get or, into your or, thing. or or give me some more of that"? Or yeah, he came up with this album, and and um. When we, you know, did like the demos for 18 in life, that's when I first heard my own sound. Like, that was my sound. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Got that song. Yeah, well, it, it, Come on, dude. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? The well, screams on it. it. What I love, too, is you're singing on there a lot like Brian Johnson on Back in Black. Really? Where, no, not sound like. I'm saying where no one's going to buy this anyway. I'm singing this today, and you go, holy shit, I'm 49 now. I got to sing 18 in life. It's a monster hit. Well, yeah, that, yeah I, could, I could still do it, but I got to spend, like, you know, weeks. Getting ready. Getting my voice ready. Yeah. yeah. What kind of guy was Bon Jovi back then? Because he was the biggest rock star on the planet. Are we drinking wine now or, or no? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. He was the biggest. Yes. I still think I Will Be There For You is one of the best songs ever wrote in that era. I like the song Let It Rock. Yeah. First, oh, yeah. The first song. But to me, it was the ballads, man. Yeah. You know, I'll be there for you. These five words, I, I swear, swear to you, you. When I breathe, I want to. When you breathe, I want to be the air for you. Straight but, up. Uh, no, well, you know. He really helped us and um, brought us on the New Jersey tour. Yeah. Which exposed us to the whole planet. That's incredible, and, right? And, uh, you know, not, that's always a crapshoot. You don't, you don't know if people are going to go for it. So, so he helped us out. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But was he a good dude or was it like business or what was going on back then? Because, man, that thing is huge, that machine. He was a good dude in that. I was a kid from Toronto that nobody knew in America yeah. whatsoever, a total unknown. And like, you know, I lived at his house for, for a couple of weeks. Oh, no shit? And, and my son, when my son was born, as a little baby, came down and stayed at John Bon Jovi's house so I could, you know, that's pretty fucking cool. So yeah. when you say, is he a good dude? Yeah. You know, there's another day that I wrote about in my book when I was like, when I first met him. He goes, Sebastian, come on. He brought me in his closet yeah. and literally gave me the shirt off his back. Like, do you like the, you like these? You, I'm like, yeah. Like, trying to give me some cool clothes. Wow. I mean, so come on. I mean, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't have to do that. Oh, I'm just like, asking. He picked, but I'm saying, looking back, I was luckier than you can. I mean, I was like chosen yeah. by him. Yeah. Out of all the front men in the world that he knew about. So, yes, he was a good dude, you know? That's fucking great, that man. That is pretty crazy what I think. I think that band's great, man, you know? Yeah, I miss Richie because Richie was a big part of it. Yeah, I, but you know, I, 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 I haven't think that's seen horrible. his stuff either. That's, I, that's just a, such a bummer. I don't care. I don't care how good anybody is. It's like that's a team, you know, that wrote some of the best songs. Go, I mean, you, you know, they were also such a powerful live band. Oh my God! Right? Like they were. They had that Bruce Springsteen, New the, Jersey working man thing. Work ethic. Yeah, but but also the way. Th 
they ca- came off on stage was like anthemic, yeah. you know, like anthems. Yeah, you know, so like like Bruce. Yeah, you know, you get into Bruce. I love him. I do. The older I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, who do you get into now that you're older? Like to me, I hated Bruce growing up. I couldn't stand the Grateful Dead. Well, and- when I was a little boy, I didn't like Neil Young's voice. Right, and I remember telling my dad because he would. He would uh, hold his R's. Like he'd go, you can't be 20 on Sugar Mountain. <laughs> I go, Dad, why does he go, Sugar Mountain? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of some hillbilly, right? Yeah, but then when my dad died, the sound of Neil Young's voice yeah. was like he, he was in the... It was that powerful. It was that... that my, like my brain associated his music so much with my dad. So then when he died, I would fucking listen to Neil Young records and lose my mind. The best, man. I mean, my favorite Neil Young is On the Beach, and most people don't even know. I love On the Beach. It's unbelievable. See the Sky About to Rain. Is that on that one? Or is that American Stars and Bars? American Stars and Bars. But the, you got wait, like wait, 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 I heard some people been talking yeah, me down. down. Yeah. Bring up Walk my on. name, yeah. spread it round. Yep. But they don't see the happy times. You live your life and I'll, I'll live, live mine. my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So walk on, but see the sky about to rain. Fucking destroys. Neil's, Neil is just a, a killer, man. Harvest is unbelievable. Uh, on the beach, Zuma. Oh, you got the box set. Wow. Yeah, look at this right here. This is the shit right here. So yeah, you got. Oh, Rust never sleeps. Look at live Rust, man. Yeah, loving it. Everything about Neil. Comes a time, man. Have, Love comes a time. What about the record? Um, the um, oh shit, man. Let me get the name of it. It's incredible. The no, no, the electronic one. Oh, trans. trans, dude. I don't even know if I, I might have listened to that a couple times. Oh no, you got to get into trans really? because it, it's like if you're into craft work, you could tell what was going on. I'm not on. into craft. I'm you got joking. I'm gonna get you into craft okay. work now. All right. You know, <laughs> my my point is the great thing about music is here I am now a huge Bruce fan and a Dead fan, and now. I can dive down that rabbit hole, mm-hmm. and they've put out so much oh, music. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, now I've got five, ten years. Totally. That's listening. the way I think. Right? Dude, I'm getting into the Beach Boys. Yeah. Because I hated of the, them growing I up. I didn't hate them, but I, I was a metalhead. I, well, I didn't so like now, it. It was just too happy. Now I'm hearing the fucking harmonies and the singing. Just the harmonies is yeah. crazy. Yeah, right? So I listened to that and the Beatles. Like I wasn't. My dad loved the Beatles so much that yeah. that was like dad's band. Yep. But now I'm fucking collecting those first pressings of that that play uh, Love up in Vegas. Oh yeah. Did you go to that? No, I got to see that. Dude, that is nuts. Yeah. If you like the, I love the, that. I, play. I'm getting it's into great. the Beatles hard. Yeah. But you know, I got heavily into the Beach Boys. Uh, once I got turned on to Pet Sounds, and then I was like, holy shit, these tunes are dark as yeah, hell, yeah. man. This is some dark stuff, yeah. dude, you know? Speaking of dark, the Dark Knight just what? showed up. <laughs> Speaking of dark. You're scaring me, If you guys me, don't Trace. know what's going on right now, Sebastian sent coming in about every five minutes in a different costume. superhero costume, <laughs> and it is one of the funniest podcasts I've ever done. It's just like, what's going on on here it's amazing this is my life dude yeah i got a yeah. little, little batman running around you got so lucky man you still have your hair i do it's can all you, mine i know i can of, see that well, a lot of guys have extensions i know fake it's hair a mile hair. away it looks like hair curtains i gotta get a color a bit but you know what are you gonna I, do? imagine sebastian <laughs> bald it would no, be I don't so wrong i would be into hats yeah hats yeah i got hats. you know i had this idea a million years ago like um you know, nobody did this. Yeah. Like when you go bald. Yep. Why not get a tattoo of hair? <laughs> you know, like perfectly quaffed down yeah. here, past oh, yeah. this, like perfect. Like, like my Bond Scott no, tattoo. Like a, yes, look, see but the hair? on your fucking I head. Know. But look how real how the hair nobody, looks. That's crazy. Look at that. 
But can you imagine? Like, yeah, right? Just a tattoo. Why didn't hair? anybody ever and do that? And you would that? always be hair. And long like, hair. Perfect hair. Like, always long hair. Just go and go, give me the Sebastian hair. <laughs> 89. Hilar- like, or you could, like, you know, go Medusa and have, yeah. like, snakes and shit yeah. in there. Medusa! Coming to get you. Who's that? Malice? No, that's uh, that's uh. I don't even know. Medusa. Who did that? Medusa. I don't know. Oh man, I think that's is it. King Diamond. I can't write. You get into King no, Diamond. No, Melissa. Oh, that yeah, that. But oh, oh yeah, Melissa. Well, I'd be the first to watch your funeral, <laughs> and I'd be the last to leave. Yeah. I love how he goes. Uh, he'll get in there. He'll be like seven people. <laughs> Tonight the circus His low voice is crying, basically like, no, get away. And then his high voice is just like, no. And the funniest thing is, dude, I I did a gig with him in Brazil. He chain smoked cigarettes. I know, right? Not anymore. He had that triple bypass. But yeah, man. He's like, go ready to go to stage. Just fuck. Just smoking. Smoking never affected my voice or drinking, you know? Little, you know, it, no sleep. I vape a lot. Yeah? You know, more than smoke, and vaping yeah. is better than Yeah, smoking. yeah, yeah, yeah. Vaping you vape, you, you get into the weed? Yeah. Big like weed it. guy, it's yeah. California. Yeah, hell yeah. It's legal. It's so strong, though. I enjoy it. It's so strong, though, right? <laughs> it depends which strain, but yeah. God, it's, it's it like, works. You ever get into mushrooms? That's Not stuff? too much. No? Not that Still, wow. uh, you, you ever talk to Kiss, Gene Simmons, or anybody? Um, Paul Stanley is good friends with my friend Cheryl Rickson, who yeah. was the lady on the back of Rob Halford's uh, motorcycle and Cream magazine. This is really oh yeah, oh about. I remember that back and, then. Yeah, yeah, she lives around here. And I lived at her house for two years, and wow. she's pretty cool. We had a Kiss uh, themed birthday party for Trace last month. Wow! So everybody was in. Uh, kiss maker. We had a Paul Stanley impersonator in the boots, and I saw Paul Stanley uh, last month. And I live up the street from you. Right. That's where I live, right close to you. So I'm in this pizza place. Me and Michael Devin. Yeah, and, uh, dude. I'm, that's like I'm playing. He's in my band, kind of. Oh, Michael Devin? Well, you, I'm jam- I jammed with him last night. Oh, he wouldn't even tell me. He's, he's like, incredible. Oh, he's so he's great. So good. And his pipes. Oh, how about his singing? His la- we did Sweet Little Sister. I was like, oh, my God. His singing's great. He sang it perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. He co-hosts this podcast with me uh, like twice a month. You oh, know? does he? Yeah. He's a great and guy. I was I was like, where are you last night? He's like, I'm in the studio, bro. He wouldn't tell me. <laughs> like, all right. I'm going to text him. Hey, I'm going to send him a video right now. I'm going to, hey, you bastard. Let's get him right now. Hold on. All right. Uh, here we go. Let's see here. Video. Did he co host this with you? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 you bastard. Was that a video? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to send it to him. Hey, buddy. Yeah. What's up? Good Whoa. jam with you last night. Why are you not telling me, man? I thought we were close. Because it's... Trying to hold secrets? It's a secret super group. Think you know my secrets. <laughs> see, see, super group, huh? Oh, uh, so you, you just threw on Slave to the Grind, and we were just talking about... Uh, it's super hard to find on vinyl, and that was an era where... CDs start kicking in and we're not even uh, really thinking about vinyl anymore. <laughs> Come on! Bamboo couch, collect the bag of famous because the weather's running dry. I know the record's sold a bunch of heat. Gonna die. No, oh no. <laughs> you are <a> bitch! <laughs> Man! Mon- monkey business is crazy. What a, what a great record, right? It is. Production's, great. production's massive and it doesn't sound dated. No, it's. Uh, it's, it's fucking heavy. <laughs> you know, it's like Back in Black does not sound dated. No, that never will. Yeah, but there's those records that were in the 80s where they had those those dumbass snares oh, where it was the yeah, turn around the... Yeah. <laughs> there's like, a, a lot a of Joe, rap records. A Joe, Rawl, a Joe Walsh record called Confessor. Yeah. And all the drums are fake drums, and I still like it, but I would love... 
to hear it with like a real drummer. Yeah. A lot but of, a lot but of... that big round, that weird reverse snare back there, <laughs> yes. like cherry pie or, oh, you know, yeah. those ones where it had the oh, scorpions yeah. did it. Yeah. So when you see, uh, what's the uh, cover band, those guys? Um, Steel Panther. Steel Panther. They, it's so obvious that they even sample it and they just do the karate moves, you know. <laughs> 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 But yeah, you know, like Back in Black, this record, uh, Appetite. Oh, my God. It sounds fucking epic. It doesn't have any dated sound. You know what you just said? You can't tell if this was mastered for vinyl. Right. I'm thinking vinyl. Yeah. Yeah, because it's pretty big. They got a lot of... uh, I'm just listening right there. Yeah. You got some low end, you know? Because people don't understand that when... When stuff is uh, put out on CD, and a lot of these shitty reissues of vinyl now, the oh, yeah. labels just ch- they're cashing in like they just reissued all the Pink Floyd, and they didn't do it from the uh, from analog the, tapes. Why? What's the Pink Floyd of all people? Who it's all about the sonicness, I know. <laughs> and 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 so you're getting off these glass masters that were mastered for CD, which is a total different sound. You I know? know. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, man. It's crazy. That's one of the uh, threads on the Kiss My Wax uh, Facebook thing, if you're in all this. Yeah. There's arguments about all the Because they did the reissues from digital. Right. And they sound great. But why not do it from the analog and get it, that sound? I think because it costs money. I think maybe because those tapes aren't in good shape. Well, they could bake them and, yeah. and redo them. But, you know, when you... To me, we were talking about this when I first got here. You got to buy the originals if they're available. Yeah. And a mint copy of like Appetite, when I put it on, or a mint copy of Neil Young on the Beach oh, or yeah. Harvest or a mint copy of Rush Moving Pictures, yes. oh, you put yes. it on, you go, whoa. Steely Dan. Oh, Asia? Asia? <laughs> Come on, right? That, no, no album sounds like that. No album That's sounds like, like that. Steely Dan. That's quality sound. That is just cocaine jazz at its finest, <laughs> right? I want to make my my next record a California record with that kind of production, yeah. that kind of sound. That's what I'm going to go for. You ever think about doing a record that was uh, like, you know, kind of singer songwriter? Well, my next record is definitely going to have that Battle of the Bottles song on it, and um, I'm I'm gonna. You know, as I get older, like, I, I want to be able to sit down with an acoustic guitar and just sing yeah. without all the production of, of a I love that. concert. Yeah, because I can do that forever. Well, you know, after, for me, what happened was after 80s rock, I think a lot of 80s people, they stuck in the 80s uh, in a way of, like, they didn't grow as listeners. No. To me and you, and I said this to Nikki Six recently on his show, I think a lot of people look at music as just a time machine back to when they were happy and single and mm-hmm. not married with bills and whatever. Right. To me, music was more of a way of life. So from the 80s, I grow into the grunge, and then I grow into the alt-country, which is yeah. Wilco and Sunvolt and Ryan Adams wow. and all that stuff, and, and, and keep going, you know? To where when when I post stuff on Instagram, people are like, "God damn, your music is so eclectic!" Yeah. And it's like, "Yeah, because I love music." Yeah, me too. It's not sports teams. To no, me. D- Dimebag said it one time. You know, they go, "What kind of music you like or don't like?" He goes, "I pretty much like all kinds of music." Yeah. Like, he goes, "There's not much music I don't like." Yeah. And it's true. Like I like music too, like that. And and and, and it's so exciting, as you said, now that you're getting into like. You know, you're getting into stuff oh, as you get older that maybe your dad loved. Yeah. And as, uh, yeah, when I was young, you know, I was like, Metallica only. Fuck everything yes, else, you know? I was like that, too. Yeah, you're like that. But then, if you're a true music fan, you go like, God, I was dumb back then. Well, I got to be totally honest with you. Like, three years ago, two years ago, my I went to get my ears checked out, my doctor. I had that plug, clogged up thing from, from allergies. Yeah. So he has this machine that'll suck all that shit out, right? Really? Yeah, you should go see this wow. guy. He's the only guy that I know that can do that. Wow. He can fucking yank that shit out. What's he do? His name, uh, Dr. Singerman down on Beverly Hills. So right. I'll give you his info. Yeah, but what does he do? So, does he put something in there? He's got like a vacuum machine. Like, <laughs> like, Whoa. It's, like it's, 
Yeah. And like your 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 equilibriums, you're all like, what? yeah. Like getting that taken out for the first time is oh, nuts. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I go there all the time now, and so he, he's like, uh, he checked out my ear, my hearing, and he and he did the whole test. He goes, okay, Sebastian, I can tell that you've been playing rock and roll your whole life because when we're on stage all the time. Most musicians have a little dip in their high end right. from years and years of that. Yep. He goes, but you're fine. He goes, your ears are fine. He goes, you got no problems. Whoa. But if you don't start now, yeah. turning it down, yeah. in 10 years from now, you will wish that you did. Yeah. And I, I fucking, when he told me that, I, wet, I cried because right. I, nobody had ever said that to me. And I don't. I was like you. I've cranked the shit out of my music. Yeah, I liked it fucking loud. Me too. And <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, it feels good. Yeah, but you know, now I don't. You, you got, know what I like now? Warm. Well, what 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 I did when my doctor told that I followed his advice, I fucking turned it down, and it did to alter my taste in music. Yeah, in ways that when I turned it down, I heard. More shit, yeah. That I didn't even know, like that was in the song. When I would be blaring it, yeah, for years. Then I turn it down. I hear shit that I never heard. Yeah, you're like, what is that? Yeah, my oh speaker's my God, blown. Never, and then you go, fuck, a guy's playing like congas yeah. in the background. I thought my speaker was blown. <laughs> you know. So, uh, th- what it did is it really made me appreciate singing and harmonies oh, yeah. a lot more. Yeah. So. Like, my next record is going to have a lot of harmony. I love harmonies, I love man. Yeah. I got, you know, I think Black Crows were really a big deal to me right then in, in that 80s where they were like, of course, I love the Stones, worship yeah. the Stones. But that was uh, older guys, you know, era and everything. And Black Crows, to me, were like, whoa, these are, you could actually do this? Like, Black yeah. Crows and Blind Melon? Like, you could play, like, kind of rootsy rock and roll? Yeah. And that really got me into that, you know yeah, what I mean? I like that too. Especially the Southern Harmony and the Amorica record, you okay, know? Yeah. You know. <laughs> were you a Black Crows guy? Uh not as bu- I was really a metalhead when yeah. they were out. Yeah. I was yeah. in a Pantera and White Zombie and Biohazard. Yeah. That was before my doctor told me to turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was right there on both. Uh-huh. That was my point. Like, man, I saw White Zombie at the uh at the DNA Lounge? I sang with them before they were a big... I was did God of Thunder at the Limelight with them. Oh. Just when they were a New York band. You remember the Limelight? Do you Limelight? remember the Limelight? Come you know, on, Do you dude. know how I got to the stage? How? Do you remember the bathroom? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I jumped. Jumped? Oh. And Sean, the bass player, she's like, no, no, no. And Rob's like, no, don't do that. And I fucking was loaded. Yeah. I jumped. Yeah. From the balcony onto the stage. Unbelievable. And I hit the stage and I went down and I like sprayed my, fuck my wrist up. Yeah, yeah. So I hit the fuck, you know. <laughs> How great was the limelight? It was wild. It was, right? A lot of, a lot of rooms in the back I mean, yeah. that were dark. Yeah, the and library. all sorts of shit up there. Oh my God. What was, the, what was Jersey like back then? Because I was a San Francisco Bay Area guy. Not to sound like a broken record. Yeah. But I tell this in detail in my book, the very first time I ever went there. Yeah. So if you really want to know, you I can get read that, it. but I'm saying. I, like, well, what I say in the book is that you could feel in '86 and '87, like Bon Jovi and Little Steven and Bruce Springsteen, that yeah. whole feeling. Yeah. You could literally feel Stone it Pony. driving. Yeah, you could feel all that. Like the same way as when you're on Sunset Strip. Yeah. You can feel Motley Crue and yeah. all those bands. Yeah. You can feel that shit yeah. in Jersey with the Jersey music. So I was like, I want some of this, man. Yeah. I want some of this vibe. It's a cool vibe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even, even now with the Sopranos, you know, when you're there. It's about time for me to start watching that again. It's so great. Are you watching it again? I rewatched it oh, like a year and a half ago, and it was just... It's just mind-boggling how great it is, you know? I, I still think greatest TV would be All in the Family. Love it. Then you get Sopranos and then Breaking Bad. As far as Love like, Breaking Bad. Yeah, right? Stranger Things also. Oh, I got to watch that. Dude, Stranger Things. You watch Love? No. You got to get into Love, dude. 
It's Dude, on Netflix. I'm, I'm telling you, though, Stranger Things yeah. is up there with Breaking Bad. All right. It's up there All as right. far as being a great show. There's also a couple other really good shows. The Affair. Yeah. Watch that. You got to watch some up, dude. <laughs> and there's one called Divorce. Divor- Divorce? With Sarah Jessica Parker, which is a good show. Wow. Yeah. You watch a lot of uh, TV? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't watch much. Uh, I except- love Netflix. Yeah, I love I it. I love it. Who's your favorite comic now? You watch a lot of comedy? Yeah, like you. The yeah. first time I saw you when yeah. you did your rock and roll yeah. comedy, yeah. I was loving that. <laughs> and I love Dane Cook. He's yep. my friend. Yep. Uh, uh, the Trailer Park Boys. Oh yeah, I'm on their show. That's and right. They're, they're hilarious. Yeah, you just shot a new. You just shot season. a new season. Yeah. Holy shit! Coming out up at the Marijuana Mansion. What's where's that? It's like a couple blocks away from my house. <laughs> Marijuana Mansion. <laughs> That's what it's called. Yeah. Wow. And uh, it's this guy that owns this nutrient company, Advanced Nutrients. It's like a billionaire with this big mansion up there. So we shot an episode up there. Uh, with Snoop Dogg and wow. um, Vern Troyer. Yeah. Vern. Tom Green. Tom, Tom Green. Great, great dude. Yeah, he's funny. The guy's funny as shit. Yeah. Remember that? Uh, I was uh, co-hosting Tom Green's show when he'd be on vacation. He had a TV show for a while, and I would go do it, you know? And um, I, I I was hanging with him, and we did a he did a greatest Tom Green episode yeah. where he showed old stuff from the vault. And some of that Tom Green stuff is so Hilarious. fucking funny, man. There's one where he paints a naked chick on his dad's car. <laughs> and his dad gets up to go to work, and there's just this naked chick <laughs> with a vagina on the hood. I, dude, it is one of the funniest things I've ever seen, man. I remember when he tried to deliver pizza to that guy that yeah. wanted to beat yeah, the yeah, hell yeah. out of him. Oh, my God. He is so funny, man. Dude. He is fun. So, dude, not to wrap this up, but yeah, my, no, pipe, I'm good with my pipes. I'm good with it. Yeah, we'll get off. <laughs> I got to tell you, man, I can't thank you enough for doing the podcast. Thank you, Dean Del Rey. Yeah, and, and it was so, fun. I, dude, I love you. And it's I, I, I trip out so much when I, I have people on the show that were monumental in my life. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, this guy was like people. People can slag on an era all they want. And if you don't like that era or whatever. But what they don't understand was the magnitude of some of these concerts, man. Yeah. They were electric, man. It still, it still is happening. I mean, I, I did 50 shows uh, last year from October to December. And yeah. I was juggling all the plates in the air. And then I got stopped yeah. momentarily. But I'm, I'm getting back into it. And I'm going to hit the road hard again. You going to play L.A.? Uh, I don't know when, but sometime. I'll be there, but man. But, you know, I'm going to do my album, put out a new album, yeah. and then hit it hard. It's going to be great. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, uh, Are you on Instagram? Or are you on, yeah, yeah I'm you're on, on Instagram. Yeah. Bach, yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember one quick thing. That <laughs> yeah. one Instagram with the giant rattlesnake. Oh, you saw well, that? Well, I, I had filmed the rattlesnake <laughs> two weeks before that. And then me and my buddy, it was a small one, you know? And I was like, holy smokes, you know, Beachwood Canyon. Uh-huh. And then you said, look at this snake. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> it was man. Huge. That was huge. I love running around up, up in these hills. It's great, it's right? It's killer, yeah. Well, uh, it was great to see you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, going to one of your vinyl parties. Yeah, and, you're uh, coming. You're coming. Yeah, and, and, sure. and go out there, man, and throw on... Uh, or get his book. What's the book called again? 18 in Life on Skid Row. Yeah. I'll give you one today, dude. I'll, I'm going to read it. All right? I will Good. read it, man. Put and it next to the toilet. That's the perfect place to read books. I like to read them on planes. <laughs> yeah, you'll know like mean? this one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Thanks, man. Dean. Thanks, guys, for right tuning on. in. Candles lit. Leave a review and subscribe on iTunes.